Okay, guys, well, we are live. So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly, I guess I'll be your friendly sergeant uh, today, because today we are uh, returning to play a first proper session of uh, Renegade Game Studios, a very cool G.I. Joe role-playing game. Uh, and with me today are the squad of Joes who are about to uh, join America's elite fighting force. Uh, I'll go the order that I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and which Joe are you playing? Uh, first up, we've got Jamie. Hey, everybody. I'm Jamie. I'm going to be playing Switchback. He is a uh, commando infiltrator who comes from a covert ops background. And he, um, he is Swiss in origin and looking forward to today's session. Nice. Uh, next up is Will. Hi, I'm Will. I'll be playing Mayhem. Mayhem is a um, Navy SEAL who specializes in kicking indoors. Very nice. And last but certainly not least is Jeffrey. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff, and today I'm going to be playing Stage Show, and he is a civilian, and he's a technician, and uh, he specializes in sound technology ice uh now last session of this uh two weeks ago we created our joes uh created the squad that will be playing and we started kind of setting up the uh the scene uh for this with you guys uh meeting up at this abandoned shack in uh the middle of the uh i believe it was utah desert and uh i think this scene well one thing i will say for those listening at home is that uh there's still at the time of recording there is still not a roll 20 sheet for uh for this game uh, so we are just making use of handouts with stuff written on there. Um, but there's a lot to the characters, even at first level. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. So we're going to be fumbling a little bit with uh, getting to know the game and getting to know the characters and what they're capable of and having to remind ourselves. So we are probably going to screw up a whole bunch of things. You don't need to correct us in chat, uh, you know, or not in chat, in uh, comments. Um, we will likely uh, find uh, what is wrong and uh, what we've done wrong. So... Just enjoy watching these Joes try to, um, or becoming part of the uh, America's elite fighting force here. So, um, with that, guys, I think our scene opens. I have set our, uh, before we went live, we set our story points. And what we'll do is we'll track uh, the Joes' story points on that big G.I. Joe logo. And then we'll track the, um, what do you Oh, man, why, uh, why, Cobra Commander's right there. That's exactly who I am. <laughs> I'm the Cobra Commander, so uh, my um, story points are listed on the big Cobra symbol. So our scene opens with you guys um, in a what seems to be an endless tunnel. Uh, you're riding along in one of those like uh, uh, six-wheeled, um, you know, not to, they're the uh, like the not the uh, aquatic or quasi-aquatic vehicles. Uh, they can go along and they can. I think there's there's a picture of one in the pit. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. I don't know the name of it. Boom. Yeah, that little thing here. That guy right there. Oh, oh yeah, right. Yeah, whatever the heck that thing is. Um, allow me to get a scarlet here quickly and put you guys down. Get rid of your excess tokens. See if I can organize this a little better here. So we got Cobra and G.I. Joe over there. Let's maybe get this a little bit smaller. And bring you guys all under here. This is probably an easier way to see where you are. There we go. All right. I don't know what Kev uh, two weeks ago. Unsurprisingly, in adopting my role, my plan as Cobra Commander failed. <laughs> so, retreat! Uh, then what um, what you guys can picture is that you're in a vehicle very much like uh, this sucker here. Uh, it's open top. It has uh, six wheel uh, six um, uh, wheels or six six wheels on it. Two of you are in the back. One of you is in the front, uh, and uh, Scarlet uh, is uh, driving along. You can picture that there's these amber colored lights that are you know whizzing by as you're making your way under here, and uh, she is traveling at a speed that. I think uh, those of you who do are not adrenaline junkies, um, you may be a little <laughs> uncomfortable with uh, just with the how fast she's going. Um, is there anything you guys have said 
uh, since uh, getting into this vehicle, going down the uh, secret um, elevator platform or descending platform, and then beginning the long drive along this uh, corridor towards uh, one of the pits. Uh, I don't think so. Um... You guys, as a refresher, you all know one another from a an event at the USO. Uh, the USO was putting yep. on uh, some kind of uh, big show, and uh, Cobra used some kind of uh, sonic device to try and, um, I don't know, like mind control Taylor Swift, I guess. <laughs> the, uh, and Sage Show, fortunately, uh, was able to intervene uh, and uh, counter their uh, technology. And through the heroics of Switchback and Mayhem, you guys were able to make a bit of an impression, it seems, on uh, uh, on the Joes. Uh, so you got your invite uh, to meet up in uh, the middle of nowhere in uh, Utah, and yeah. now we find you uh, driving to get your or driving down to get to the pit. You have not met uh, this red-haired woman who is uh, taking you there. Let me put uh, her illustration back up too, because it's likewise pretty freaking cool. If I remember correctly, we did talk outside before we got in this vehicle yeah. with yeah. her. Um, yeah, you sort of recognize we'll... one another, and then uh, switchbacks came seemingly came out of nowhere. I think we had that moment where we were all a little surprised to recognize one one another in such a remote place, and um, and, and and not seeing anything around too is just puzzling to us, right? As far as why are we here? Mm -hmm. What what are we here for? Yeah. And so I think as we're riding along switchback is just sort of taking it all in and um looking at these guys every so often to see if they're as um nervous maybe as he is okay uh, is anyone hiding how they feel or are you uh, kind of going along eyes like saucers yeah like i feel like i'm not necessarily like totally against it but i'm also at the same time you know, not a traditional adrenaline junkie, as you said. So he's probably holding on and, you know, it's a very new experience for him to be sort of in this military setting. So mm -hmm. who's in the front of the uh, front passenger seat? I bet Mayhem is. Yeah. Yeah, I think Mayhem's sitting up front. <laughs> Did Mayhem start fussing with the, the uh, radio as well? Yeah, yeah, he's like, okay, where's the tune, Joe? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think as he's playing around with it, you know, like there's a couple of, uh, it's that classic, like, you know, the first two stations he hits are things that clearly, like, Scarlet gives you a look, you know. Um, there's a, like a, you know, um, Lawrence Welk-esque, you know, one that you hit first. Uh, <laughs> and then you, you hit a second one, and it's maybe, I don't know, uh, like 50s doo-wop kind of stuff uh, and then you hit the last one and it's the you know whatever uh rock and roll or like yeah. you know soft metal kind of stuff and to like yeah and this is we see you guys um in the film version of the cartoon version of this we would see we would hear you echoing down the tunnel of the music coming and then wow you know you the thing hurtling by and then off into the darkness um, I think so that means that uh, you likely don't have any other things to say until you finally, wah, you know, drive out of a tunnel and you see this sprawling thing. You can uh, picture all of this in motion as well. There's, you know, recruits that are running along in a squad. You know, uh, there are strange, incredibly high-tech vehicles that are moving back and forth across the top. There's mi uh, military gear that's being moved around. Um, there is the overwhelming um, smell of a uh, of a garage. There's just like oil and uh, like brake fluid and all those smells that you associate with a garage. It just is what hangs in the air here very, very much. Um, and it seems like everybody is going, like everyone seems to have a place that they're going. Uh, and this, unlike every other military base that you guys have been on before, there's a huge variety of different uh, service branches uh, that are represented here and um, you as I think is, is often the case too you've got your um, you know there's some people who are clearly dressed all in the same uniform and then you get your special forces types who are all dressed in you know 
there's a guy who walked by in a red uh, football jersey uh, who had a, a <laughs> helmet that's a little set off, you know, to the side. There's a guy walking around with a Rottweiler. Um, is there is that a guy from the life? What the hell's the Coast Guard doing here in the middle of uh, uh, the desert? But she finally pulls up in front of a um, uh, kind of a uh, like an office um, and. Effectively, what they've built down here is a small uh, city, you know, come military base uh, in the middle of this giant uh, cavern. And the uh, it looks like, you know, if you were on the surface, um, I think those of you who have served, so Mayhem and, and Switchback, you might recognize this as like one of the first offices or the office for the base. And uh, she stops and says, end of the line, boys. And you can see that there is a... Um, uh, man who is standing there and likewise uh, you t I'll, I'll leave it to you to decide whether this person uh, seems to be you know reg force or something else he's leaning against the wall and looks like this hey Kevin yeah. I'm not seeing anything any of the handouts uh, oh the handouts are you seeing on the screen no that's what I'm saying I'm not seeing anything on the screen oh hold on I mean I see our our yeah. icons and your little boxes. That's it. No, that's. I had I had a problem too. I had to refresh. It, it, whenever you switched the screen to the underground, I I couldn't see it. Yeah. There you go. How's that? You see it now? Yeah, I just see the main. I don't like I said. I don't see any. Maybe um, hit hit uh, refresh. You want me to reconnect or refresh? Uh, how did you fix it? Did <laughs> you refresh. <laughs> refresh. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. Roll exactly. twenty. Go. Fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> Will we get Will back? Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Maybe it won't. Oh, hey, bingo. Okay. And I got and your I'm camera. Camera. Perfect. Uh, yeah. You see, you see all that now? Yep, I'm good, Kevin. Thank perfect. You. perfect. Perfect. No, thanks for letting me know. I'd, I'd uh, much rather know than uh, that. So, this is the guy you see leaning against the uh, thing. He gets mm -hmm. up and um, uh, says, uh, So, these are the new fish. And uh, hmm. she looks over and says, These are the new Joes. And he kind of, hmm. Um, he seems to have a, uh, I'm trying to remember where he's from. I think it, he actually might be around your neck of the woods here. Uh, Will, let me just double check here. Uh. Here we go. I mean, it's not like uh, we don't have uh, data files for every single one. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> <thanks>. <laughs> no, West Virginia. What is actually kind of oh, yeah. near you. Yeah, yeah. In, in the yeah <laughs> okay so he uh says um uh well then get your stuff get up come on and uh scarlet looks at you all gives a smile turns the music off uh and says uh um good luck thanks for the lift so he looks you uh each of you over and he says you had names before you came in the pit. Those don't matter no more. At least not till I'm done with you. You can call me Mercer. And if you haven't done so thus far, let's have each introduce you uh, to one another. Code names only. And he points at you. You, Swiss man. We'll switch back. And you, Vague Feller. Mayhem. And you, Grizzly Adams. Stage show, sir. Sir. The sergeant would be happy with that. Sure thing, sergeant. Oh. <laughs> when you meet the sergeant, uh, you'll know you're meeting the sergeant. Mm. You can just call me Mercer. Then, or sir, it is. what I've been led to believe is that each of you uh, is a, uh, will be a new member of our latest squad for G.I. Joe. Is that news to all, uh, any of you? It is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Big it man? Is. 
mean, I knew we were coming here for something, but I didn't know it was that. Well, this is the opportunity you have to refuse this uh, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Though, I must warn you, if you do refuse, we'll have to shoot you and leave your body to be found in the desert. And uh, you can hear as, uh, from somewhere as she's pulling away, Scarlet's like, We're not going to shoot them, Mercer! <laughs> he shakes his head. She says, She never lets me have no fun. Ooh. Now, for you, uh, uh, as you get to know folks in here, uh, I'm going to assume that I can uh, leave my pistol holstered. And he stops and looks at each of you over. Then. Of course. You're likely to hurt, hear this from others, so you'll hear it from me first. Yes, I was a part of Cobra. Yes, I was a viper. And yes, I'm the only viper to have successfully uh, left Cobra and still kept his head about him. Mm. He leans in, by which I mean on my neck. Now, first thing you've got to learn as a G.I. Joe is two things. Well, two things you need to learn. One uh, is that my lists are rarely accurate as to the numbers of things. Two, you've gestures around. There are ample opportunities for training in your speciality or things beyond your expertise. But to enjoy those privileges, you also must do what we like to call, or the sergeant likes to call, grunt work. So, to get yourself acclimatized to the pit and to your responsibilities and opportunities as new Joes, you will be required first to undertake a number of tasks, and each of the tasks that you complete successfully will entitle you to training time as well. So he hits a, I know each of you guys have, um, what is it called here? Uh, there's a, like a, a wrist unit that has like info and stuff on it and they have a specific name for it. Uh, it is, it is, it is, hold on. I know where they reference it. HTB access pads. Mm. So he uh, hands out one of these to each of you guys. You put it on your wrist. Uh, these have kinetic-based batteries, so if you keep things moving, it should charge itself. Now, uh, uh, he holds out his. He says, hold out to synchronize. Okay, hold it out. Yeah. He looks at each of you. He's like, what do you think we are, some kind of gang here? You don't need to hold these out to synchronize. God dang. Y'all are <laughs> just gullible. Uh, don't let the Sarge catch you like that. Uh, he will uh, take full advantage of you and have you carrying around an empty bucket looking to find it, fill it up with a bucket of steam. Now, these are the tasks that you have before you. And uh, what you can see is uh, it gives you a holographic display of the pit. And these are the different... Uh, I actually could not find a proper... Um, uh, map of what the pit looks like uh, that actually corresponds to what's in here. I could find one from the 80s comic, uh, but it didn't match up with what's here. Here's what your tasks are. Uh, any of these tasks, uh, some will be more suited to you than others. You can go to the observatory, uh, environmental control, jet craft hangar, uh, rotary craft hangar, kitchen comms, motor pool, equipment locker, or the harbor. And yes, we have a harbor in the middle of the desert. We are G.I. Joe. If you, for each of these tasks, which should take you one hour to complete, you will be entitled to one hour of training on top of that. Training can be conducted at the aircraft engineering, uh, the training area, the firing range, motor pool, sick bay, labs, or the decoy lodge. Now, poof. I have access to each of your HTB access. Uh, I've already forgotten the name of it. HTB access something or other. Pad. 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 Each of your HTB access pads. And uh, you will be in touch with one another. You need not worry about accidentally transmitting things over uh, the entire pit because you hit a wrong button. 
And if anyone tells you that I did so when I first came to the Joes, I would say that they are a filthy liar and you should stand up for your training officer. He takes a double look at the HDB access. <coughs> yeah. Then, I will leave it to the three of you to conduct things. I will check back in in a few hours. I have more important things to do. And G.I. Joe trusts that you will find yourself uh, to where you need to be and not get yourself lost. Use your time wisely, Joes. Prove your value to the team. And we will see uh, what you'll be doing next. You have that? Man, yeah. squad. Uh, yeah. Roll out. So he turns and uh, walks away off to do something else, leaving the three of you. It's not wrong. He's got the holographic display uh, up here. Um, seems pretty easy. You can even, like, if you fuss around a little bit, you can hit something. It'll give you kind of a, a route to show you how to get there. So. And I love this because it's uh, they give you a bunch of Joes. Uh, in the just for those, I guess for, for those listening at home, we're playing the Snake Pit um, adventure out of the uh, core rulebook, so this will have spoilers for that. But one of the things they suggest is uh, you can use, you know, the more famous Joes, or you can dig deeper in the in the roster to find ones. And Mercer is one of the ones they suggest. Uh, I, I I only remember him from uh, the illustration in the um, '80s version of the uh, what is it the uh, what was it called uh, GI Joe. Uh, Order of Battle, I think uh, those comics were called. Probably, yeah. I think yeah, that's right. but they. I remember him. He he just looked like someone's divorced dad. Like the illustration <laughs> did not do justice to the character whatsoever. <laughs> it, like completely untoned arms and just <laughs> standing around. So, Van Joes, what do you intend on doing? So, do we want to split this up? Is that the logic here? You guys can uh, do whatever. <clears throat> uh, the task and training, um, each one, each attempt takes one hour and allows for one skill test. Um, you can lend assistance to one another, which grants a uh, boost, so you increase the dice that you're rolling. Um, mm, 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 this does not make the task take any less time. It just makes success more likely. And lending assistance does not use up that Joe's attempt at the task. After oh. a PC successfully completes a task, they are free to train. Training uh, requires a specific skill with a, uh, depending on the difficulty. <clears throat> See, I think all the training skills are the same um, same difficulty. It only allows for one skill test and failing a skill test uh, adds a story point to this team pool. Succeeding on the training gives you some benefit. Okay. So uh, each, basically I guess what you can do is everyone can assist on one task, uh, we'll figure out how narratively you're doing that. And when you choose to go to the different areas, you can go and check these out. I can tell you what the training is and what when you go there. Okay. Uh, and we'll do, everyone will get a chance to do one uh, task first and then we'll go and you know, all of you will do your training. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I think we would wanna do them together. I think we would wanna go to each of the places just you know, if somebody can got a higher skill or something, we can help out. Um, let's start with what do you huh. instead of the uh, equipment locker? Yeah, was one of the places. It seems like a fun place to check out. Yeah, and we're well. I don't know. Some of us are gearhead kind of people, so yeah. So let's check okay. that out. See what's going on there. Let me add uh, another handout here. Uh, this will be uh, oh, squad notes and benefits because you guys will gain access to stuff as we go along here. The and things listed, Kev, are always a skill on this. Yes. Thing yeah. So the task okay. will always be, and uh, the easy ones are have a lower DC. I think it's DC five for the easy ones. DC fifteen for the is fifteen or ten? Hold on. Uh. Yeah, 10 for the harder ones. And then uh, the d training will be uh, DC 10 as well. Okay. 
So you can judge if, you're, if there's things that you're better at or you've got uh, some kind of ability to um, um, to get a, ben uh, a bonus uh, to it or to re-roll or something like that. So I was trying to find the illustration here. There we go. So. Yeah, I just realized I could scroll down and see all that stuff. There you go, guys. So this will be, uh, you have the ability to edit that. Uh, so this is where you can add your benefits and stuff. And I've got stuff to add in. We'll do that there as well. Okay. So I'll put it under the handouts as well. Squad notes and benefits. There we go. So where are you heading to first, Joes? Equipment locker. Yeah. Okay. Equipment locker. All right. So equipment locker is. Uh, so do we all have to succeed, or just one of us? No, just one. Just one person needs to succeed. But you can okay. each only make one skill check, and you can uh, uh, each assist once. So yeah, saying? for each other. So if you guys all want to work together, then you would get uh, two uh, two uh, bone boosts or whatever they're called. Steps up the dice ladder. All right. So the equipment locker. The locker is an understatement. Most Joes grew up in houses smaller than the weapon is smaller than the pit's weapon storage facility. Banks installed in the walls hold guns, knives, explosives, armor, experimental equipment, carefully stored and managed by a digital inventory. Your task, Joes, is to organize loose battle dress. Uh, store armor left out by after the Joes responded to the all hands mission in a hurry. So, there's a bunch of shit you need to organize here. Um, the skill check, uh, alertness or brawn will be an easier check. Uh, streetwise or technology will be a harder one. Who is taking the lead and who's assisting? Let's see. Um, did Switchback have a good alertness? That's, Unfortunately uh, not, and he's not no. uh, excellent. Okay. I have a D2 Brawn, I have a D8 Technology, and a D4 Streetwise. So I'm good at the hard ones, but I'm not great at the easy ones. Okay, you've got the D8 Technology. That may be the best direction to go then. Because that'll bump up to a D12 with everyone's assistance. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. The tech, okay. So that means then a uh, stage show will not be able to make another uh, task check. Yeah, like I right. Whereas there's lots that are easy with technology. Lots of them, almost all of them actually. So if we use up my this one on a hard, do you have okay. alertness, um, Will? I think I've only got one. I think I got a D two in it. Um, let me check. Yeah, it's really my only good my only really great skill for this little game uh as well let's take a look at uh, just take a look at your um what are they called do your benefits uh as well see if there's anyone or just to refresh everyone's memory of what you can do oh right under our perks here that's what it's perks is the word i was looking for uh, 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 uh. to see if there's anything uh that oh, is oh yeah Each what are the edges again, Kevin? Sorry. Uh, edges. Oh, edge edges uh, advantage. Uh, edges oh. rolling two dice in the batter of the two. Um, oh gosh, I've already forgotten it. <laughs> so I mean, I, if any of them, if if any of them, we have a way that we could say because I have a specialization in sonic technology, and I get an edge uh, when I use that. So if any of the other tasks involve technology that I can say is sound based, then we would get I'd get an edge there. My other one is social skill test. It's no good. No. That's the one that has mm -hmm. anyone else have any uh, pertinent uh, perks? Yeah, I looked. I don't. I don't see anything that would specifically be useful. Um, this snag, point. edge, and snag. That's what they're calling advantage, disadvantage in this game. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, then, well, I mean, you just want to go forward with it with uh, tech. Well, do either of you guys have brawn? No, no, I don't. 
I've got conditioning, not brawn. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's got glory <laughs> muscles. And nobody has alertness either. <laughs> I've got a D2, and I think, Jamie, you said you had a D2 in alertness? No, no, I don't. Oh. Okay, so yeah, I've got a D2 in alertness. So with the help, a D2. So I have a D8, I have a D4 in Streetwise. It's D also hard, but you guys could bump that to a D8. Yep. With success. The, 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 so let me get this right. You roll the D20 and you add the skill dice, right? The yes, D4. you roll both at the same time and you add them together. Right. And then if you roll a one on the d20 and you don't succeed, that is a fumble. If you roll the highest number on your skill dice, that's not a d2, um, and you succeed, that's a crit. So maybe this locker, maybe this equipment locker, this is a hard job for us. Maybe we're like, no way, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't give up. <laughs> you got you to you put forth the effort, brother. So the benefit from this is that uh, during the mission's assignment and requisition, all Joes can access standard battle dress they're trained in or a battle dress upgrade without needing to make a requisition check. Oh. So the upside is you're gear. unlocking better gear. Yeah. Does I mean, well, every one of these places will have a similar type of little benefit to it. So it decides right. what, what you want to go to. Oh. Yeah, do you guys want gear? Supplies? We can go for it. Gear is fun. I mean, your yeah. technology skill, this is the only place where it's a hard check, it looks like. Everywhere yeah, else. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Easy. We'd be using my, and I don't have right. any good, I don't have any good uh, description of why Sonic, I would say technology more like, you know, he pulls out his, you know, iPad mini and is like organizing the plan, like creating a plan on how we're going to organize all the gear is how he'd be doing it. And I don't see how that's Sonic related. So mm -hmm. I don't see the edge coming in there. I, I say we try the streetwise. Yeah, yeah, I think we should try streetwise. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like he's, you know, he, he's moved so many times, right? That's where that comes from. Like he's, he's been, a, he's lived on the road okay, his whole so life. Just so, so you guys, again, uh, Stage show, if he succeeds on this, that means stage show's done for this round. It would be mayhem then switch back. You can each try a different skill at a different task. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. But this is just for the first hour. You guys, uh, from the way Mercer left it, it seems like you're going to have several hours worth of time to uh, to do this. And I believe you can repeat tasks as well, just that it takes, if you're unsuccessful, it's the full hour. Reminder as well, story points don't let you reroll unless you roll the one. Right. Oh, then let's just... And so, but can I use technology later again? Uh, yeah, yeah, and just not in this first pass. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. so then, yeah, that's fine then. Then we can use technology here. Yeah, he pulls out his... his he's got a little iPad mini or some similar little tablet device, and he's, you know, drawn up like a, a layout for the locker room, and he's what's drawn your, a plan for What's your tech score right now? A D8? A D8. Great. Okay, so give us a uh, roll 1d20 plus 1d12, please. Okay. So let's last roll. 1d20. First roll of uh, the game. 12. Nice. Oh, yeah. No problem. Excellent. And because that's more than double, if this was combat, that would be a critical success. Oh, wow. Sweet. So what do we see as uh, I think Mayhem and, and Switchback are helping you initially, but then they kind of leave you to the task to go and, uh, you know, get theirs going. What do we see as you get this uh, battle dress all fully organized? Yeah, like I said, he's like, he's planned it all. And, you know, maybe he's even like made it much smarter. So like the locker room was just like people come off, throw stuff here. And he's like, oh, you know, if we move this, if we move this shelf over here, then when they they seem to want to take this kind of gear off here. Look now, and he's like labeled it and, you know, he's like, yeah. it's mostly more organized than it was. And I mean, maybe he's had to organize uh, backstage work oh, totally. a lot too. Like it's probably very similar. Like, you know, guys who don't know what they're doing, there's just piles of wires here and, you know, equipment there. And he's sort of done something similar. Like, no, okay guys, put all the wires here. Cause then when we need them later, He's got like a good labeling system. He's basically applied his uh, knowledge to this of stage okay. setups. So I'm just putting in your benefit from here. And so 
Oh, and now stage show will get a chance to do training after this round of tasks yep. is done. Yep. Got so it. you're. So let's see here. Just putting in your benefit here. Uh, oh, come on, Madison. <laughs> there we go. All right. So there you've got the benefit of it. Okay, excellent. Yep. What is the next task then, guys? Uh, let's see here. Man, they got a lot of technology stuff, so that's good. If you want to poke your head in and see what the benefits would be from each two, feel free to do so. You guys have all the time in the world. Uh, let's what, see here. What is the benefit of the rotary craft hanger? Okay. Uh, benefit of the rodeo... Ro rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> My Calgary is showing here. Um, the benefit from it would be that there are two Skyhawks that are available later in the mission. Mm -hmm. That's maybe one that I could go for um, since I do some driving, some piloting. Um, so okay. that might be where Switchback would, would go for his task. Okay. Cool. What about Mayhem? Mayhem is thinking he's probably, let's see here. Um, Mayhem's gonna check out the motor pool. Motor pool. Motor pool, uh, the benefit of that is for the duration of the mission, gain an edge on a skill test related to ground vehicles, such as driving or targeting. So it's getting yourself yeah, familiar that, with the uh, the Joe vehicles. Yeah, the vehicles and the weapon systems. Yeah, that sounds like sounds like mayhem. Okay, sounds good. All right. Uh, so then, uh, switchback. You switch. You switch. You selected uh, first. So then, assuming your allies are assisting you, what are what skill are you using? Uh, I'm going to use driving. Okay. What's your driving score right now? It is. Let's see. It's six. D6. So you're rolling yeah. 1D20 plus 1D10. Okay. For this. And driving is an easy score. Oh, no, you're in a rotary. Uh, driving is easy. Okay. So you just need a five. So 1D20 plus 1D10. Ooh, okay. Good for the assistance. That is... Uh, so you are... Um, the, let me tell you what this place looks like. So the staging area and fueling station for G.I. Joe rotary craft, such as the Dragonfly XH-1 assault copter, as well as other VTOL um, aircraft like the Skyhawk, uh, is this hangar. Your task is to fix and refuel uh, to a pair of damaged Skyhawks, and you make pretty short work of it. So uh, what do we what do you think we see as uh, Switchback's getting himself going in the uh you know in the rotary craft hangar yeah I, I think um switchbacks probably wrecked one or two of these in his, back in his day and seen some of this damage before so he reaches down and grabs the toolbox and starts reassembling some of the parts that he was familiar with and uh sooner than later he starts to get the whole thing back in order and uh, starts testing it just to make sure that it's firing up correctly and um, yeah, I'd say that, you know, for him, he's he's definitely um, wrecked one or two of these in his day. And so he's able to call back on that and uh, get it back together. Okay. So, and you get the things up and the, I don't have um, an image of this loaded. Uh, so I cannot show you in the handout, but I believe we've got illustrations of them in, or blueprints of them in the core rule book. Yeah, it's on uh, page 184. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. So there we go. I was just trying to refresh myself. I yeah. Was like, I think I know what this that's is. That's what a Skyhawk yep. looks like. Oh, nice. Pretty sure I broke one of those as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those those panels, those wings on the side. Those things were a little fragile if you played with, <laughs> yeah. with any enthusiasm. All right, great. And then the final thing is uh, heading down to the motor pool. So Mayhem, uh, the staging area and fueling stations for tanks, such as the Mauler MBT uh, artillery, such as the Wolverine, and road vehicles, such as the Vamp, are here. Your task, Mayhem, will be to fix and refuel a Vamp. 
Isn't a van right. just a jeep? Mm, let me get back over the rule book. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Multi-purpose attack vehicle. Yeah, yeah, it's basically it's it's almost a Humvee, honestly. Yeah. It's got those roll bars like a Jeep, though. If I, if I remember, because yeah. I had one it's of these as a kid. Rack. Yeah, this is a big <laughs> thing. Uh, I credit so my my driving Wranglers as an adult is because of me playing with my vamp as a kid. <laughs> is it a vamp, Kev, or is it a vamp Mark II? Big difference. One's got a big machine gun. The other one's got a rocket launcher. Oh yeah, the singer. This one. Uh, this would be the Mark One. Yeah. So, then yeah, oh, it is a Mark One. Look at that. I just said that because that was the one I had as a kid. <laughs> uh, then uh, mayhem. This will be. What is your? Uh, are you using technology or driving? Yep, technology. So it's um, a D6. So that'll be bumped up to a D10 then for you. Right. 1D20 right. plus 1D10, please. Oh, <laughs> but you rolled a 1. You rolled a 1, which means you can spend a story point to reroll, or you accept the fumble. Yeah, let's spend a story point. That's you not Got cool. it. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead and reroll that. Two story points left. There you go. All right, so maybe you uh, <laughs> you get in there and uh, you're about to, to re, uh, rework this damaged vamp and uh, maybe it is the missile uh, version and uh, you're about to start pulling stuff out and maybe uh, you realize as you're going in like, oh, these are all fucking primed. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, you know, go back and you, you fix whatever is... Uh, um, you fix it so that they, they you're not going to blow up uh, while you're working on this thing. And your benefit is, let me put this in here. Uh, oh, no, I don't want to show players. I want to edit this. Here we go. Uh, motor pool. There we go. Uh, a vamp mark one is available. Or later in the mission. Cool. Pretty cool. All right. So everyone has completed. An hour has passed. Your first hour in the pit is done. You guys are all kind of checking in with one another after that first hour. Uh, everyone has successfully completed their task, which means everyone is entitled to training. So yeah. what would you guys like to do with your training? Uh, their training is listed under the training thing, under the task and training handout. Aircraft engineering, training area, firing range, motor pool, sick bay, labs, or decoy lodge. And these are benefits that are separate from the things you got from the other, and you will not be able to uh, assist with training. This is going to be all on you guys. Okay. So, so this would improve our ability? At, this any... will give you some other collateral benefit. Oh, okay. Okay. Each of the training thing will give you some benefit. If you're successful in it, gives you some benefit. There's no penalties to retry. You just need to complete another task before you go back, but you will be all on your own. And I think the difficulty for all these is uh, 10. Okay, so. So what are you guys thinking? And you, know, you don't need to keep these separate. Each of you can uh, can do the same thing. Um, yeah, like, I, th I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go check out the labs. I mean, I'm curious about what's going on here, right? I'm a technology guy, and I want to see what okay. kind of stuff's going on so let's kick off with that then so the series of secured the labs are a, secu a series of secured rooms with work areas hands-free monitors and components for a variety of scientific research and experiments and you can picture there's a lot of people who are working in lab coats and stuff like that in there um i don't know if i'm trying to think here isn't um there is a joke called sci-fi isn't there yeah, that yeah. sounds right. Yeah, so I can just make up shit now too, right? Like I'm just ga <laughs> my code name is Gaslighter, uh, and <laughs> I tell you, I'm playing. My, my Joe's name is Red Scorpion. What? No, it doesn't. No, I remember him. I had him as a kid. Um, so this will be um, a matter of reading through the manuals and gaining some basic practical experience with the with the pit's lab experience uh, uh, equipment, and this has the benefit of. Uh, you know, while we're playing uh, with this um, campaign set in the in the modern era, this has the benefit of uh, the excess of the uh, you know late Cold War military spending. So there's a huge amount of uh, of incredible uh, technology to access here. 
You can make a science or technology roll against a difficulty of 10. It's a stage show, whenever you're ready. Uh, D20, yeah, okay. D20 plus, what's your technology? Uh, D8. So D20 plus D8, please. Oh, I've seen that one show up already too. It's good stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Nice. There you go, all right. So this is only for you, stage show. If you could, uh, I'm not sure if you can record this on your handout or somewhere else, but uh, for the duration of the mission, gain an edge on a skill test related to the skill you trained. So for the duration of the mission, you gain an edge on your technology uh, checks. Okay. Um... Mayhem and switch back. Where would you like to train? Um, I think Mayhem's going to go to the firing range. Firing range. Nice. So the firing range... A secure area for firearms training, the only area in the pit where weapon discharging is allowed without exceptional authorization. And you can picture as you're making your way down into the firing pit, like at first you're hearing the kind of like the sound of regular firearms going off, and then you'll hear like a <laughs> as someone's firing some high range laser, and then there's a, you know, some other kind of strange, like, uh, 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 it almost sounds like tearing paper as someone's firing a flechette round. <laughs> And um, this will just be a matter of hitting stationary and moving targets while avoiding non-threats. Uh, you will be making either an athletics or a targeting check. Yeah, I'm going to use uh, targeting. I've got a D4 in that. D4, so D20 plus D4, uh, please. Whoa, okay. So we see you unloading, and uh, yeah, the, uh, the Joes seem to be uh, impressed by it. For you, Mayhem. During the mission uh, mission's uh, equipment assignment and requisition, you can access one limited ranged weapon or a weapon upgrade for a ranged weapon without needing to make a requisition check. Okay. Okay, so you get either a limited range weapon or a weapon upgrade without having to make a requisition check. You've demonstrated a good proficiency with your weaponry. And then switch back. Which would you like to go for? Um, Switchback's going to check out the uh, aircraft engineering. Nice. Okay. So uh, this is a lab for the design and development of the next generation of G.I. Joe aircraft. Um, this will be a flight simulator. Uh, you're experiencing a variety of, uh, so flying a variety of G.I. Joe aircraft with advanced simulation technology. So it seems like you're almost in the pit, you know, in the actual cockpit of uh, whatever it is you're, you're training on. Uh, this is a driving check. So would you give us a driving check? Uh, yours is, I think, what, D6, you said? Six. Yeah, so yeah. 1D20 plus 1D6, difficulty of 10. Okay. Nice. Uh -huh. That's a critical because you succeeded and you rolled the maximum on your skill check. So what? I think you just impressed the shit out of everyone. Like when you get out of the cockpit, there's an entire squad of people who are applauding you for your performance. What do you think it looks like? And what, uh, um, what do you call it? What uh, aircraft were you flying? Uh, that's a good question. I, I, I think maybe, isn't there like a, um, uh, like the jet, um, the Tomcat? The, I can't remember what the jet was now, but uh, I think it's I like the jet. That. Yeah. And um, so he, he I, I, I think, you know, like he's just really comfortable in these types of simulators he's been in them a yeah. lot and he's had access to, to them a lot and so he gets in there and is right at home and 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 able to to make this jet perform some things that maybe no one's seen before even in the uh, training room Incredible. and uh, so i think maybe you're yeah. thinking of the sky striker yeah that's it that was it I, I forgot the name of it was there a blackbird for like an sr-71 for gi joe as well or am i just fucking making like confusing the x-men with them uh, Not that I remember. No, okay. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Yeah. So there, there was. They have one called like the Night Raven or something like that. That's similar to to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you give an incredible display of uh, of aerial. Uh, combat uh, ability with the uh, Sky Striker, and by the time you get out, like all the training crew is all applauding. They're really blown away <laughs> by how well you did um, because of your successful training as well. Um, 
For the duration of the mission, you gain an edge on any skill test relating... Uh, sorry, you gain... Uh, an edge on a skill test relating to an aircraft, such as driving a skill test to fly a Skyhawk or acrobatic skill test to operate a jump jetpack. Mm. Okay. So, um, you guys, whew, you completed your first hour of training. That means back to work, boys, to enjoy the uh, next uh, round. What, are the, what is the next task you are going to attempt? Let's see here. I think I want to check out comms. I mean, that would be something I'm very interested in. So, yeah. Okay. So why don't we start with that then? Uh, so as you walk in here, floor to ceiling, computer banks, and the latest transmission equipment allow for immediate global communication. This is the, you walk in and there's a ton of people at different stations. It's the shield helicarrier command center kind of thing. Um, your task will be to monitor local communication. Uh, you'll be scanning local broadcasts and a selection of close band signals for mention of G.I. Joe sightings. Um, so apparently you are the um, man bear pig. Uh, would you... So this is going to be either technology or streetwise or persuasion or alertness. What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking this is this is his technology with like sound okay. uh, benefit one. So. And your, your tech is just a D8? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's a 1D20 plus 1D12, please. Difficulties and only. This is the one where I think my specialization in sonic technology would matter. So yep. if I blow it. So you get an edge in this. So yeah, then uh, if... roll an extra d20 afterwards and see. And we'll take the higher of the two. Oh, and it adds to the. Oops. Plus one d12. Okay. Ooh, so that's. See? The one in the skill dice means nothing. It, only when you get a one in the d20. So that would be still a success, but not, you know, knock your socks off. That would be oh, just that's barely scraping by. So it's the nine, I think, is what you do. But fortunately, the, because you chose uh, tech uh, technology, that is a success. Whew, okay. Uh, but it's, it's, I think, you know, you're, maybe you're used to fancier stuff. This is like, you know, a race car driver being asked to drive a 25 year old Lada. Right, and you're like, yeah. oh shit, this is <laughs> not what I was looking for. All right, so and then here's the benefit: all Joes will gain a boost uh, on skill tests in comms and the hallway outside comms for the remainder of the mission. Cool. So let me add that in here for you. And that was. Okay, I don't quite have these in alphabetical order. Let's uh, do that for you. We go and comms. Oops, here boost on comms. Uh, mm -mm -mm. You know what would be fun in, in uh, if you're playing this in person, and also, I mean, you could do this online as well, is have little cards written up beforehand, little uh, note cards you can hand out to the players as yeah. they complete the different tasks, so you can have them sit in front of you and knowing it's only temporary boosts. Uh, here, comms checks, uh, and the hallway outside of comms. Okay. Mayhem and switchback. What task would you like to try next? Let's see. If, if we're not... Um skilled in one of these um what what does the role look like uh, then you roll a uh, you roll the snag it's uh okay. what roll 2d20 would take the lowest of the two mm. and the only failure of, of uh, uh your task is that you just don't get to train okay um, so let's see here um uh, back to the list Let's go check out the observatory. Okay. So the observatory, let's see here. An astronomical telescope uh, and home to the Pitts Aeronautics Lab, perimeter surveillance, and weather monitoring. The observatory is visible above ground and part of the cover-up to keep the pits secret. The power of the Pitts West Wing comes from the observatory's power grid 
Access to the pit from the observatory is hidden beneath computer banks in a closed off lab mag bolted to the wall and requires three point authentication to open. So you can just imagine the process of going through this to get into the lab. Your task is to calibrate equipment to run a series of tests to ensure the observatory equipment works within the expected parameters. Okay. Okay. Uh, this so, will yeah. be, uh, are you using science, technology, alertness, or survival? Technology. Technology again, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. So then you're, and I think you said yours is a D6? Yeah, it's a D6, so I'd roll a D10, correct? Yep. 1D20 plus 1D10. Please go right ahead. Holy crap. Ooh, so fortunately, again, the one on the skill dice doesn't mean anything. Uh, yeah. So that is a success. Um, you could spend a, a story point to, you don't need to do this, but I just want to point this out that remember, you can spend a story point to reroll any one. So, yeah, I'd, I'd rather save that for no, a yeah, like you don't need to right now at all, but and there's no consequence for rolling the one, but that's the only way you get rerolls in the game is that if you're, yeah. unless you've got a, a you know, perk that allows you to do it. Yeah. Uh, the benefit, no, I mean, it's success, I'm good with that. Okay. So then, what uh, the benefit is, is uh, a Joe in the observatory during the. Uh, Uh, I will say that you gain the benefit uh, is that you have a very clear understanding mayhem of the operations of the surveillance equipment both inside and outside of the pit. Switch back. What is your task? I think Switchback's going to um, check out the Jetcraft hangar this time. Okay. All right, the Jetcraft hangar. Where are we? Aircraft hangar. Ancient. Nope. Where is it? Oh, right there. A storage and fielding station for G.I. Joe's jets, such as the Sky Striker and the Conquest X-30, as well as other equipment that uses jet fuel, such as the Jump jetpacks. The task is to fix and refuel Jump jetpacks to uh, return malfunctioning jetpacks to working order. So this will be tech or driving or science or alertness. All right, um, he'll go, he'll use his driving again. Okay. I think he's he's warmed up on the flight simulator. So he's yeah. He's gonna go. And go what was your, that. running again? So what you're driving is, is a what? Six. D6, okay, so then you're rolling 1D20 plus 1D10. Okay. And a difficulty of five. Let's see how this goes. Woo! Jeez. Oh, <laughs> yes, barely. Yeah, all right. All the way, man. <laughs> so the benefit from this, uh, let me add it into your list here. Uh, oh, there we go. And that down. Jet craft hangar. Uh, all Joes are assigned a jump jetpack during the mission's equipment assignment and requisition. Nice. That's cool. Requisition phase, here we go. All right. Then, that is, uh, your tasks are done. This has been three hours that you've been in the pit so far. You're learning a lot and you are definitely helping out a lot. So, for training for the second round, why don't we go the same order we did stage show? I imagine you've had time to give some thought to what your next round of training is going to be. What do you want to train on? Um. <clears throat> I'm gonna try, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna try going to the decoy lodge, even though I'm not very good at it. Okay. So the decoy lodge, let's see here. Uh, an operational vacation lodge that serves as a front for the comings and goings of high ranking military personnel. Training, act natural. Move around the lodge like normal non-military folk might. This actually might be something that was up your alley. So you need to roll intimidation, deception, or persuasion. What are you thinking? I have persuasion. What's your persuasion score? D4. 
the 4K, so 1D20 plus 1D4. Difficulty of 10. Come on, big money. Just yeah. nice. And, oh, and I got a four on my yep. skill dice. So it's a critical success. So uh, <laughs> what do you think it is? What's the uh, critical the success that you get out of this um, blending in? Um... Oh, like how did he do it, or what's the yeah? Like, what do we mean? see? Is it, this is remember this. So the lodge itself is again. It's it's just sort of like covert training stuff. So there's probably people in here who are not military personnel who are just trying to uh, you know um, who are just socializing. Right. I I don't know. I think I just pull it off so well they don't even realize I'm actually here for the Joe training that I'm just like yeah yeah maybe on a tour like I am one of the guys who just you know the one of the civilians they've brought in to. I mean, I would blend in that way, so. Okay. And the, so let me just double check. I'm, mm. I think each of these advances uh, that you get, guys, like the, the things that you individually get from training, it's a one-time thing. Like you get to get an, you know, constantly get an advantage uh, or get edge on your rolls. You cash it in for one skill roll. Right, they're, I, I put them under mission perks, and oh, then perfect. that way it's like... Yeah, yeah, that's great. So then for the duration of the mission, uh, you gain an edge on a skill test relating to the skill you trained. Right, yeah, okay, I figured it would be the same thing. Okay, so you got an edge on persuasion uh, for this one. And then Mayhem, which uh, training do you wish to do? I'm thinking Mayhem's going to go to sick bay. Sick bay, okay. So this is the med facility for tending the sick and injured. Uh, training will be on instru uh, instrumentation. You're going to familiarize yourself with the sick bay's futuristic and often one-of-a-kind medical equipment. Um, the downside is because it's experimental, it means about one in six things will cause you cancer. Uh, and uh, one in four things uh, is just really them dosing you with LSD to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I'm going to use uh, science. Science, okay. Yep. Uh, so then go ahead and give us a science roll. Oh, Fantastic. Nice. So the two doesn't count as a success because right. you need to have a D4 to get uh, crits. But yep. that's a great roll. So for the duration of the mission, gain an edge on a skill test relating to the skill you trained. So cool. you got your banked yourself an edge to cash in on... Uh, sorry, which one was it you used? Science. S science, nice. All right, and then switchback. What are you cashing in as your training? Me unmute. Um, sorry. Uh, Mayhem um, has done uh, sick bay and uh, stage show. Did the decoy lodge? So that vacation lodge in the middle of Utah, where stage show is blending in. I really think that you probably ran into someone that you knew. Uh, stage show. Like, there's a celeb uh, that's yeah, at the Yeah, oh, lodge. probably. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Nice. What um, do you think it switched back? The, uh, what about just the training area? Training area? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the training area. An area for Joes to hone their physical skills, including a gym, a pool, and a fighting ring. Additionally, a salvaged Cobra battle android trooper was reverse engineered into a robot sparring partner named Combat. And hmm. let me give you a... I got a handout here for the Bat robot because they are also super fucking cool. I had a bat when I was a kid and I played with it so much... <laughs> The hinges for its arms were completely fucking useless, so it would hang around loose at the side like a corpse. <laughs> it was great. Okay. And here is, as a reminder, what the bat looked like. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember these guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although I th the illustration doesn't do justice. If it was really a bat, his arms should be hanging completely loose at the side. 
<laughs> yeah, it doesn't like the hand come off like yep. one of them, so he's yeah. missing the hand. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> A slightly ill-fitting uh, backpack full of alternate hands. I want to say that that little centerpiece was like a sticker too, like it was, you <laughs> know, like so. a hologram sticker. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, um, I don't have any skills in these areas, so uh, this is going to be. Uh, so you have two kinds of training. You can do obstacle course, which is acrobatics or brawn, uh, running through projected holographic uh, recordings of series of tight spaces over hurdles, up walls, under water, or you can do sparring. You can fight uh, combat uh, in your preference of hand-to-hand -hand combat style. Oh. Um, yeah, I think I'm equally challenged on this. So <laughs> fighting combat sounds like like fun, though. So I hope he'll try to. So fight. let me give you the, the maybe the incentive uh, might uh, affect your decision here. The obstacle course will give you an edge on one of those whatever skill you trained, but the sparring will give you one limited melee weapon or a free weapon upgrade. You're demonstrating proficiency in a specific kind of weapon. I see. Um, yeah, I think that he'll spar. Spark. Spark. Yeah. So then you're using either might or finesse. All right. I am not um, skilled in either of those. Okay. So. Let me double check that you're rolling at a snag. Then uh, I'm just okay. gonna see here. And remember, you can, one of the things you can do with a uh, this doesn't help you in this situation, but remember, uh, you can spend a um, a story point to roll as if you are specialized, and remember to keep track of your specializations because you get to roll every one of the dice, your skill dice and every smaller one and take the highest of all of them. Hmm. Um, so then, let's see here. Uh, skill training. Rolling without skill levels. Yeah, me, you roll the snag. Okay, so. Switchback, you get up there and <laughs> get yourself ready. Is it your uh, uh, might or finesse that you'll be testing? I'll test my finesse. Finesse, okay. See if you're quick with this thing. So combat walks up and then kind of gets ready and then, you know, Boston Dynamics style gets in that really <laughs> like, it's just slightly unnerving, like, oh fuck. <laughs> Let's see how you do. Difficulties are right. 2D, 20. Take the lowest of the two and you get 10 or higher. So it's just 2d20. Yeah, and we'll take the lower of your two rolls. Oh, there you go. Oh, pretty amazing. <laughs> Let's tell us what it looks like as you uh, land this, uh, you land combat on its ass. I've, I've seen this. I've seen this before. I've seen this, the movement of this thing before. And I think Switchback's timing is able to predict his movement. And he, he drops, the, sweeps this thing right off his feet quickly. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> it's the ground. As a non secular I uh, this morning before the session, I, I had uh, briefly thought of using Sergeant Slaughter for it because uh, uh, you know iconic character and everything. So I, I listened to, uh, I found a clip of uh, when Sergeant Slaughter shows up in the cartoon. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll see what he looks like. And he, the reason it makes me think of it is because he shows up and it starts like fucking tearing apart all these bats. Or, uh, but the thing is, is that Sergeant Slaughter doesn't really so much have an accent as that he just sounds like an hard of hearing senior citizen. Because it just sounds like he's shouting all the time. I'm like, oh, that's a little different than what I remember. And I thought it'd be more fun to do Mercer instead of me just being like, sounding like, you know, someone's old uncle who can't hear properly anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's great. So then you will, during your mission, uh, this is uh, just for your character, during the mission... Uh, equipment assignment and requisition you can access one limited melee weapon or a weapon upgrade for a melee weapon without needing to make a requisition check okay. pretty cool all right so as this thing bang, lands on the ground you guys have completed a half day of training uh why don't we take a, a mid-session break here and let you guys all meet up in the joe's mess hall Compare notes of what you've learned during your training, and then we'll come back and complete the or kick off the second uh, half of your day's training. So oh, we'll get a cup of Joe with the Joes. Couple a cup of Joe for the Joes. <laughs> so for those listening at home, we'll be back uh, momentarily.
The uh, item requisition part is going to be hard to do. So oh, yeah. many options and cool things to try to get. Oh yeah, yeah. I've already. I mean, I've got an idea of what, like in my mind, of what Mayhem uses as his main weapon. Yeah. Uh, it's like a. Uh, it's like an over/under shotgun grenade launcher. Mm, cool. Yeah. That'll do something. <clears throat> oh, here now that Kev's back, I have some show and tell. Oh, we're back from our commercial I my, break. I had my I I had my newer comics that I showed you last time. I found all my old ones. Nice. Oh wow. Special oh, nice. missions, yeah, Lifeline. Nice. Yeah. I got a special missions with uh, Airborne. Awesome. Oh, there's that the SR seventy one at night, uh, or not the yeah. seventy one? The nice guy isn't that one? The one you were talking about, Jamie? Yeah. Yeah. This one. Night Raven. Nice. Yeah. And then I got some really cool from the original ones. Here they have captured Cobra Commander. Mm. 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 I love that co outfit, that Cobra Commander outfit. Yeah. Look at this cover. Desert that's badass. Snake eyes on the ropes. I'm pretty sure that's the era. I think it's Mike Golden who did the covers for them. Uh, he's a guy who did uh, Micronauts. So he, was, he was most famous for it first. And then Storm Shadow and that's Destro badass. facing off. Yeah, that's awesome. Boy, that one. Uh, this one, yeah, Stalker, and, uh, Sergeant Slaughter, yeah, 
Then these are the I can't the remember dreadnoughts. These guys names. Yeah, yeah the dreadnoughts. Oh, yeah. Then I got one where they where Destro joined the Joes for a bit. Wow. This one the cover fell off. Flint then, and uh, Lady J, I think. Yeah. And then I got these two, which are amazing, which are the That's the uh, order battle I was talking about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those with things all are the awesome. like all the like files inside. Yeah. That's the one with the guy who looks like the divorced dad. Uh, we, I, have, we're Mercer. I actually have I actually have I have issue one and two, which is all the Joes. Yeah. I don't have so if three you and four, take a look at the picture the for Mercer Robert's. in there. <laughs> it's Mercer? fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see, he's probably in the first one because he's M. They're all in alphabetical order. Oh no, he's in the second one. Right. Oh yeah, here you go. <laughs> Nice. Look at those spindly arms. <laughs> I love <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Dude, wear sleeves, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. That's awesome, Jeff. That's all my old childhood G.I. Joe comics. Oh, my gosh. Not many, but there's some good gems in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Ryder's back to this is last time. Her, my dad, and, and like it's it, in our uh, where I grew up, uh, it gets really fucking hot in the, in, the, in the summertime. It's like you know 32, 33 some days for for Canada. That's hot, uh, Celsius. Yeah. And uh, he he loves getting these, these sleeveless t shirts from uh, <laughs> that you get free from like beer ca like uh, cases of beer oh, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's he's in his mid to like late seventies. He wanders around with these things on. It's uh, mwah, Bruce Madison. <laughs> nice. It's a great look, man. Yeah. Oh gosh. And then with it tucked into his uh, shorts with a belt on and socks and sandals, <laughs> it's, it's the gun show. Class. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Tickets to the gun show come free in every case of Coors Light. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's All right. Uh, so then, um, what? So let's. Uh, uh, you guys are, are meeting up uh, for you know for Chow in the in the mess hall. What are you guys talking about? Uh, you know, as um, you've completed your first day of uh, or first uh, morning of training at the pit. Um, I think uh, for switchback, it's like it's just like hitting him now, uh, like what how much of like a military melting pot this is and how you've got every specialty under one roof and how fascinating it is to see them all work together mm -hmm. fairly seamlessly. So I think that's where, where Switchback's head's at, you know, like, did, did you ever think we'd get all the branches working together this well? And four it's nationals it, too. It's impressive. Well-oiled machine. Yeah. Any of your training that's been particularly stand out so far? Um, I mean, maybe I talk about, you know, the decoy lodge was pretty cool. I mean, it was a, you wouldn't believe who I ran into there. Just name dropping some people. I <laughs> uh, should have been there, Mayhem. You would have loved it. <laughs> <laughs> So it could be that um, you know to, that might help your the rest of you decide what you're doing for your next round of training. Right. Um, one second here. All right. So then uh, you also can talk about over lunch. What do you guys wish to do next? What is the next task? <clears throat> Let's see here. I think I want to check out the observatory. I mean, I'm checking out the things I'm interested in, right? Yeah. More so than what the task is when I get there. It's like he's looking around at like all the stuff he wants to see. Yeah. I'm interested in the enviro control. Okay. I think uh, Mayhem's going to check the kitchen. He's getting hungry. Okay. Yeah. Wait Your for that. Gotta eat. Okay. Uh, so the observatory, it doesn't really matter whether you succeed or not, uh, Jeff, just because remember, like, the tasks are really more a matter of unlocking stuff for the squad in general. Yeah. So if you do that, 
you, you check it out. You, you've got uh, uh, some interesting uh, view in it, but you'll be in the observatory um, uh, when you're completing your, your, your task this round. Yeah. Um, Switchback, you were the one, the first one to respond after. You said Enviro Control, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then, Environmental Control, the hub of the pit's ventilation system. Artificial atmospheric generators tied to nearby solar panels and windmills control the temperature and humidity in the pit. That is a very fancy way of saying it in a uh, AC system. Like, yes, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. totally. It's like uh, you see a community with the uh, air conditional repair uh, school, <laughs> John Goodman at the head of it. Um, the same, so your task will be to synchronize climate, um, measuring the temperature and humidity of each room in the pit, ensuring every room is within its set parameters. <laughs> Again, I can't yeah. think of anything other than community. <laughs> I'm like, we're gonna. This is the room temperature room. Um, you can make survival, uh, technology, or science or culture. What are you thinking? So, uh, um, I think did um, did stage show get some type of benefit for us if we used technology on this mission? Uh, he has for only himself. Any of the benefits okay. you get from training is only for yourself, and it's a one-time use. Okay. Some yeah. For some reason, I thought there was like a task or something that did that. But um, um, I'm looking at the thing. I don't think so. What was the uh, first task that Stage Show did? The first task that Stage Show that was the was clean up the locker. room, clean equipment up the locker, yeah. equipment locker. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. Then yeah, I'm gonna try. I'll just use survival for this. Survival. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so and... that'll be a. Difficulty five, uh, and then your what's your survival rating? I don't have it, so it'll. Oh, so then snag, I uh, you will actually because of the assistance uh, that will bring you to a D four, so D twenty plus D four. Right. <laughs> you guys are all standing in front of it. Is it that button there? <laughs> no, is I, this I think a it's snag sec- though? This is. Um, uh, I think you're still rolling with a snag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's see if that worked. Oh, a D4 snag roll? Let's see here. Uh, yeah, that worked. Cool. Okay. Uh, so, and that's a success. And uh, it's a crit, again, because you got a four on your training dice. So, um, yeah, what uh, what this means <coughs> is environmental control. Rangers gain the benefit of their environmental expertise while in the pit for the duration of the mission. Are any of you rangers? No. Okay. So, but it also feels nice. It's quite nice. <laughs> you know? It's a bit comfortable now. Uh, someone sitting in the uh, mess hall underneath a vent is suddenly like, oh, okay, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and then Mayhem, you said, uh, which one were you going to? To kitchen, right? All right. So the kitchen, where is it? Where is it? Here we go. A massive full-service kitchen equally able to churn out a simple meal for 100 Hungry Joes as one exquisite plate of oat cuisine. Uh, Your task is food prep. So put your hair net on. Uh, That's your battle dress for today. And then prepare tasty, protein-rich meals for your fellow pit crew and non-perishable meals for the return of nearly 100 deployed Joes. Woohoo! So here we go. Prison kitchen. Um, you're making a <laughs> culture, a science, a survival, or an alertness check. That will be a science check. Science check. Okay, so what is your skill in science? Get a 1d2. So that means you're rolling 1d20 plus 1d6. All right. Nice. All right. Uh, so that would be a success. Here is the benefit. Guys. All Joes gain one temporary health for the duration of the mission or until you suffer damage. So why don't I put a blue health bar on each of your tokens Nice to reflect that so you guys each have. That's sweet. Yeah. I need that. (laughs) Yeah, you're not... uh, No, I am very not tough. really take a punch. No, that well. There we go. 
What do you think it is that you pre you prep mayhem? Oh, let's see. Uh, Where is he from originally again? I... Rhode Island. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, he's from so Providence. chowder. That's yeah, that's a... what I was just sitting there thinking. It makes me clam chowder. Nice. All right. So the mayhem chowder uh, gets everyone feeling pretty hearty and uh, ready to go. All right. So everyone can see everyone's blue bar now. Uh, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. yep. Perfect. All right. So then uh, you guys, uh, you complete each of your tasks and you are about to turn your mind to training. When, just as you're cleaning up your equipment and starting to plan what to do next, a distant buzz from outside the pit catches your ear. Before you can attune to it, your ears are slapped by the burst of an electronic explosion. <laughs> the lights in your room all instantly die. <laughs> and the constant hum of the pit-wide devices stops. After a second of darkness and silence, the emergency lights in the corridor all snap on, as does the screen on your HTV access pad. <laughs> um, Mercer is on the little screen. Grab anything you uh, anything useful. And meet me in the observatory. Stage show. You're actually in the observatory. Mm, yeah. Um. So, and there is, let's see here. Uh, so then uh, it means switchback and mayhem. You will have to make your way to um, to the observatory from where you are. But and... um, if we have like a training benefit, do we have to like, um, for instance, I've got the jetpacks. Would I be able to bring jetpacks? Yeah, we're going to talk about yeah, equipment requisition oh, okay. in just a second here. So, but yeah, you, um, uh, I think Mayhem and it comes from the kitchen, switchback, you were in uh, environmental controls, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the two of you meet up in the uh, jet hangar. We were able to have a quick uh, conversation before uh, meeting up with your liaison. So you maybe see one another and are like, what the, what's going on? Is this another drill? I don't think so. It sounds serious. All right. Um, if there's anything you wish to do uh, before heading up. Oh, let's see here. You're in the observatory. Yeah, I'm already there. Let me see here. Oh, so here's something that actually you would have seen had I actually <laughs> prepped properly. <laughs> so... You, uh, Sejo, you're in there. You're, uh, you think you're wrapping up your calibrations of the observatory equipment when the atmospheric needles start to dance. Mm. Um, you call to the mo uh, you call to the monitor. You call. What? Hold on, the sentence doesn't make sense. You call to the monitor the sky segment that's registered. Uh, that's a really fucking weirdly phrased. <laughs> The sky segment that's registering an anomaly and immediately understand why your instruments went wild. A coiled generator the size of an APC pulsing with blue energy falls from orbit. Before you can zoom on in on the anomaly, it fires off a wave of energy that washes over the sky above the pit and then shoo, everything goes dark. Uh, stage show, would you give us a technology test please oh cool uh, and this wouldn't uh, sonic would not apply I should take a look at your specialty so I know what and things might apply here do you guys have that's the only one I have oh, okay especially sonic yeah oh my gosh what a terrible roll Ugh. oh you need to roll a one I know okay a total <laughs> Toilet, but no, <laughs> no ones. All right, yeah, I didn't roll the the fumble. All right, so the oh, and we got back from commercial break, so we'll give you guys a story point as well. Here you go. Um, so you have no idea what's going on, but uh, you could no. also <laughs> give us a science or survival check. Uh, I don't have either of those. 
she'd be rolling the snag. You'd have to roll net two nat twenties. But I've seen stranger oh. things happen. So give us a two okay. d twenty roll. All right. Can't hurt. Two d twenty. Yeah. So pretty good rolls though. Yeah. So then um, you're sort of you know trying to figure out and, and uh, there's a bit of a hubbub in the observatory with the uh, the Joe uh, staff that's there, and that is when you guys all meet up in the um, uh, the observatory. Now, what? Uh, let's talk about first the the uh, equipment requisition. So normally, equipment requisition, sorry, equipment assignment and requisition takes place at the start of a mission before deployment. Occasionally, a mission is thrust upon the unsuspecting PC, such as when a day of routine tasks and training gets interrupted by trouble. You guys will start off with the following standard issue equipment. You have clothes as your battle dress. You will have one close combat weapon, like a blade or a bludgeon, one sidearm, uh, one side firearm, one rifle or shotgun, and two standard or concussion grenades. So let me put those in chat for you. Mm. I'm assuming you're not memorizing every word I speak here, so. No. <laughs> I think it's. I'm gonna record. I'm never gonna. I feel like I'm never gonna record my gear on my character sheet. I'm always gonna put it on a notepad because it feels like it's different every mission. It is definitely different every mission. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's. Oh, I can't spell grenades. Okay. So that is what every uh, you have access to. You sort of can picture you're passing around gear. In addition, uh, the liaison found two standard med kits for you. These allow those without science to make a science test to heal damage without a snag. Kits, not kids. There's two children accompanying you. <laughs> They're from the Mediterranean. <laughs> exactly. It's like uh, 30 superheroes. So, uh, this is not a second, but uh, they had a character in the uh, 80s Justice League named uh, General Glory. And uh, there's a great scene. He's effectively like a Captain America airsats character. And uh, he's talking about how he brought his, like basically his, his version of Bucky into a combat. He's like, me and so-and-so went into this and this. And Martian Manhunter is like, you brought a child into combat? <laughs> so That's the um, instead of uh, requisition checks, tasks, and training accomplished in part one may have opened up additional equipment options. So this is where switch back your training. So let's see here. You guys have access to a jump pack, uh, two Skyhawks, a vamp, and you can access standard battle dress that you're trained in. Uh, or a battle dress upgrade without needing to make a requisition check. So right now your upgrade would be to your clothes. I'm gonna assume that unless one of you guys wants to have an upgrade to your clothes, uh, you're gonna wanna take a look at the battle dress that you have yeah. training in. So um, let's. this is the first time we've had to do equipment um, uh, gearing up. The jump packs do not take up any extra room. Remember that your you have six hands worth of gear. So, fire uh, your shot. Firearm is one. Close combat weapon is two. Rifle or shotgun is two. That brings you to four. Two grenades. Boom boom is your six. So, make a decision for yourself whether you're carrying a rifle or shotgun. Uh, you will have a sidearm. Uh, you'll and then decide whether you want. Two standard grenades, two concussion grenades, or one of each. Med kits do not count towards the uh, that limit. You also have the jump packs. And uh, the battle dress that you're trained in. So, well, let me start with switchback. Switchback, what are you trained in as far as... Your... Thing, your... Uh, are you commando? Switch back? Yeah, okay. Oh, you might be muted, Jamie. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, I am commando, okay. and I'm trained in 
Let's see, grenades, finesse. Uh, so bat battle dress is what we're styling. talking about. Battle dress is armor. Uh, so whenever I say battle oh, dress, okay. that's just tactical, your armor. Tactical is qualified and trained in life. Great. Okay, so what that means is the, if I remember, uh, I'm looking at page, here we go. So page 137 of the core rulebook. Qualified equipment, different equipment requires different qualifications. Uh, you are assigned gear, you are qualified in. Um, depending on the equipment, you might need to make a choice, have limited access to a selection, or need a specific item. Um, for example, if you have grenade qualification, uh, you have access to a wide variety of grenades, but can only bring a limited number on a mission. You can only wear one battle dress, even if you're qualified to use multiple types of armor, you have to choose one to wear. So I think what that means, um, it says anything that you are trained in. Okay, so that's just light. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if there is a distinction between trained and whether qualified means you're trained. Um, shoot, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I, I have that written down too. I'm trained I in light think... armor and computerized battle dress and I'm qualified in impulse armor. Well, maybe I'm wrong then. Never mind. I'm... Which is yeah. a specific armor. And I read through this before, uh, after the last one too, to make sure I had it clear in my head. And then I, I don't remember what the difference is now. Uh, okay, let's see here. I mean, it's the only light armor in Limited, so I don't know if that's means anything uh, let's see here yeah I think that's what um... what the qualified does is allows you to access those limited uh, the limited gear I believe so like for uh, for the commando it was uh, trained in to qualified in tactical armor and tactical armor Let's upgrades. Here we go. Oh, I see. So qualified. The classification is light armor, and then the type is tactical. Yeah. So, okay. On page 71, Kevin. Yep. There's the sentence right above the picture on the right hand side. Um, at the end of that paragraph before the battle dress and weapons, it says you can access any equipment you are qualified in without requisitioning it. Got it. So it doesn't make it means that you don't have to roll for requisition, but it doesn't make it training. So I think what that means yeah. is. Um, oh, it's a way, Kev. I think what it's supposed to represent is a is a way for your character to have specialized gear like as you play the game and move on like let's say yeah because i know will discussed having a special shotgun that had a grenade launcher attached eventually if, as we play you might make that qualified gear for him meaning that like when he loads out he gets his signature shotgun that's thing. actually I something that's different because there are specific gears Let's hear. So you can requisition any battle dress or weapons you're trained in, uh, as well as uh, all kits you meet prerequisites for. You can access any equipment you're qualified in without requisitioning it. So let's do this. Um, maybe there's <laughs> yeah, guidance that's what I mean. in the like, rata. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that's what I mean by like, because it says you can access any equipment you're qualified in without doing the requisitioning part. Like, so that's so that you can say like. You don't have to roll every time for a shotgun with a modified thing because you're qualified with it. Uh, it's yeah, a little, we'll, we'll get back to that. I, I, there, okay. I think what you're saying is different from the way it works, but for, for right now, um, what we'll what we'll say is that anything that you have qualification in, that is also something you can grab right now. So for switchback, you could grab tack armor, uh, which is light armor, grants you a plus one toughness. Uh, and has the trait of deflective, which 
Uh, armor piercing weapons ignore. Uh, Armor piercing weapons ignore the bonus of toughness. So what do you think your tack armor looks like? Uh, switch back. If, if that's what you want to grab. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what he wants to grab. Um, I would say that it's sort of like a um, tactical vest that has all kinds of different compartments and things uh, in it that he's able to kind of keep different gear in okay. and it's uh it's probably made out of sort of like a uh uh sort of maybe like a, almost like a kevlar fabric something yep. like that nice okay and then uh mayhem you are infantry right yes okay so then uh training light medium and heavy armor So, uh, because of the benefit, yeah, so any you're trained in any of the standards. So, page 154, attack yeah. armor, ballistic armor, or hard body armor, you can uh, access any of those three. Oh, yeah, he's definitely going to throw on the, the hard body armor. Okay. Uh, and Seicho, you're a civil. What is your, your scientist? No. What's your class or your uh, profession? Who me? Yeah. I'm a technician. Technician. For, yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Then uh, train in light and computerized battle dress and qualified in impulse armor. Uh, so, impulse armor lined with uh, vibrating uh, proximity sensors giving wearers advanced warning to jump for cover. You want to take that or you want to take um, light... I think uh, that's the only one that I qualify for. Yeah, you're trained in light armor as well, so you could take tack armor instead. Tack armor gives plus one to toughness. Impulse armor gives plus one to evasion. Yeah, and I think I'll just take the one that it says I'm good at. The impulse <laughs> armor? Qualified in, yeah. So it's a I'll reactor uh, yeah. suit delta. All right, so you're the th we see the three of you guys, thanks to stage shows, uh, I getting back into the fiction of this, maybe like you guys are getting ready to get geared up in stage show because of that amazing job you did of organizing all the gear. Uh, you're like, hold on, and you are able to call up the three specific things that you guys look uh, need to pick up. Uh, we've heard what Switchback's armor looks like. Mayhem and, and Stage Show, what do your armors look like? Mayhem's is, um, I mean, it's... it's. Uh, Did you go with the hard body armor? Yeah, he went with the hard stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's like a lot of um, plastic-type plates yeah. um, that are composite. Yeah. Uh, Probably composite carbon fibers and stuff like that. Okay. He's got like you know shoulder pads, breastplate. Um, if you've if you've ever worn a football uh, player's uniform with the pads, yeah. All of the pad parts, quote unquote, that's where the hard protection is. Nice. Okay. Uh, and then stage show. What does your armor look like? <laughs> I imagine that it's like. Um kind of like a really tight uh you know it's like black uh lycra or what's the, what, do you, what is that stuff spandex you know it's just like a bodysuit yeah and uh but it's got all these sensors on it and all this stuff and it's like because it's because it's like that light and tight he just puts his leather jacket on back over top of it <laughs> i love it <laughs> <laughs> okay uh then um not very flattering is it <laughs> let's talk about the difference between the rifle and the shotgun then uh so because uh, weapons are, are it's very cool how easy it is to kind of specialize weapons and such and then we need switchback also because he kicked the ass of that combat uh battle droid then he also gets a melee weapon uh so and you don't need to actually keep that yourself switchback if you feel someone else is better qualified to make use of that you can certainly hand it over i don't know if any of you guys are good at melee 
No, I don't think I specifically took any okay. melee skills. So I both have... a rifle and a shotgun are standard weapons. So I think all of you guys are trained in this. Um, the uh, let's see here. Um, the shotgun has a range of 20, uh, 20 slash 60, so 20 slash 60. Uh, the rifle has 100 slash 400. Um, the rifle does one sharp damage, and the shotgun does one sharp damage, and as an alternate can do multiple targets in, no, no, it automatically does uh, one sharp damage to up to two targets in a 15 foot cone. If anyone has the sniper or any ability with sniper stuff, the rifle has a sniper quality, and the shotgun has the reload quality. Uh, the rifle also has the martial arts uh, trait. Let's see what that does. Yeah, right. I don't know about the martial arts. I'm gonna have to look that up. Oh, it just, uh, it's another one of those ones like sniper where it's, it's keyed to certain uh, class abilities. Oh yeah. Or profession abil abilities, uh, but the reload, reloading is, Complicated. Uh, after firing this weapon, you must spend a move action to reload it before you can use it again. It's basically pumping it. Yeah. So you guys want a shotgun or a rifle? Uh, let me make your decision. Rifle. Yeah. Now, I've got, from one of my training things, i got a limited range weapon or upgrade. Ooh, okay. So a limited weapon. Uh, what, what? And you're infantry, right? Yeah, infantry. Let's see what you're trained in. I think uh, I'm trained in everything, I think. Yeah. Let's see here. And targeting is what you use to fire ranged weapons, right? Correct. Yeah, unless you've got... Uh, I think you might have a special ability that lets you use science when you're using sonic weapons. But uh, what I have is when making skill tests, I can choose athletics, might, finesse, or targeting. And then when making skill tests of the chosen skill, including attacks, I can use technology instead. Hmm. Okay. So go. I'm gonna. Ch I think I'm gonna choose targeting. Okay. Um, so you're training all weapons, yeah, mass infantry. So uh, limited, limited weapons. Uh, and is is it a limited range you got? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't necessarily understand what that question. Oh, what, what is it? What's the the what were the specifics of the weapon you got? Oh, it said uh, access one limited ranged weapon or upgrade without a check. Okay, so limited range. All right. So then, uh, limited range are things like, um, yeah, <laughs> a directed elemental weapon. So this could be how you get to stage show a sonic weapon, uh, yeah, or you get a flamethrower, frost cannon, laser rifle incendiary blaster, a marksman's rifle, or sniper rifle. Yeah, I might use it to get that weapon for him. Let's Let see, see what yours. Ooh, grenade launcher? Yeah, that's that's eventually, that's going to be the signature. I was telling Jeff, my idea is to have like an over-under shotgun grenade launcher. Oh, nice. So yeah, grenade uh, launcher is one of the limited range weapons as well. So let's see, those two. That's on page 142. That's yeah, well, it, that's this is my this is my only complaint about having the PDF is it's split over like two pages of columns. Oh, for the yeah, the bounce back and forth for the table. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the artillery see. lobber, uh, which is the grenade launcher, it does um, one sharp damage in a blast of ten feet, and it trips, and it has traits of anti tank, uh, which means it ignores uh, plating, uh, indirect, reload, sharp, and wrecker. On a miss, the area targeted becomes rough terrain, is what Wrecker does. Uh, sharp yeah. is just the kind of damage. Reload we talked about before. Uh, indirect. You don't need line of sight to acquire a target, and you ignore cover as long as the target does not have total cover directly above it. And then anti-tank, just ignore plating bonuses to uh, toughness. Let's see here. And on a hit, you do damage and knock targets prone. I was gonna say, I think I need to use that to get the sound weapon for Jeff. Mm, okay. I think that's what I really need to do. I was just looking at those. Uh, so is it a um, elemental jet where it does like a, a cannon out front doing a cone of damage? Or is it a directed energy one with a longer range that does um, 
one only on that one target concentrated sonic beam which one do you think it is jeff um i'm imagining probably more of a targeted system okay to okay. start with yeah so that'd be the stats for the directed energy uh a directed element rifle so it'd be a sonic gun i guess or sonic whatever you want to call it jeff the um you need to have tech d2 which you've got as a range of 75 feet does one laser elemental damage what page is this on Kevin? where it lists the actual page item? 142 143. okay uh Laser weapons gain stun one as an alternate effect and can be used to spot targets as an alternate effect. So you can effectively create like a sonar beacon for people to help hit them. Cool. Uh, it also has computerized, um, um, has a processing unit that needs to be rebooted as a move action if successfully hit with an electromagnetic effect. Uh, and then it is element, which means it does Sonic, here we go, we'll use sonic damage for it. A reverberating element that can be subtle or blatant. Sonic, sonic weapons gain an alternate effect identical to the weapon's primary effect, but it targets willpower, but harder. So it, it has a penalty of two steps down. So instead of targeting, uh, when you target someone, they get to pick what we sort of judge based on the circumstances they pick. Usually it's evasion or toughness, but you can choose to target willpower instead at a slightly a harder roll. You decrease your attack roll by, or your dice by two. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, so and that cool. does think one damage, 75 range. And also, like, I guess, like, we're talking this through in a great amount of detail. The actual amount of information could fit on, like, very easily on one line in a post-it. Like, you'd fit a character almost on a post-it with the skills, uh, not your uh, advantages, I guess. But this yeah. weapon is basically, Jeffy, it boils down to 75-foot range, one sonic damage, and it has the computerized trait. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, and what do you think the uh, sonic weapon looks like, the sonic rifle? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what am I picturing? I think it's got, I think it's like, you know, you'd almost mistake it for like a laser rifle because it's probably using some kind of a, you know, maybe it is even using some kind of a laser passing through a crystal that's you know mm -hmm. basically changing the light wave into some kind of uh you know tiny little piercing sound wave that you know at, at range that's why it's computerized you probably have to dial it in at like what distance the you know the sound is extremely loud okay so yeah you hand this thing over and um it's this very fancy looking um rifle uh, let's see here. Then for uh, stage show, uh, what are you trained in? Do you need to pick up any other? Oh, I guess so. You have six hands worth of stuff. Are you leaving that rifle or shotgun behind then, or are you leaving the grenades behind to make room for it? Um, I would probably not take my regular gun, my regular shotgun, or whatever. Okay. So you got then a side firearm. You got your uh, a blader, a bludgeon, close combat weapon. Yeah. Um, and let's pick your grenades. Um, then for let's see here for switchback, you get that limited melee weapon or an upgrade to your melee weapon. Uh, so, what are you thinking here? Uh, upgrades are things like. Uh, let's see here on the melee weapon would be like you know a flaming knife or you know a ice knife or something like that. Um, limited weapons include things like a fire axe, <laughs> a sledgehammer, um, knives like uh, fighting knives, a katana, a claymore, nunch <laughs> nunchucks. Uh, chain whip, throwing stars, a boomerang. Uh, what are you thinking? Oh, those are all project. Those are uh, range weapons. Sorry. So be the nunchucks or a claymore or a katana or a kopesh. What do you? Th um, what about the fire axe? Heck yeah. Yeah. So fire axe is uh, uses finesse or might. 
Uh, it does one sharp damage. Uh, the alternate effect, when you use two hands, it does two sharp damage. It is silent, and the other ones are don't really matter. Martial arts and uh, sharp, so... Yeah, so that'll be two sharp damage. You could take Sideshow down in one hit. That's awesome. All right. Uh, and then, let's see here, Sideshow. Is there any other gear? Do we have any other gear to distribute here, or has everyone got their gear? Man, what are you taking as your weapon then? A rifle or a shotgun? Shotgun, baby. Okay. Shock, shock. Uh, yeah, has everyone... shotgun, a pistol. Okay. Has everyone selected um... their uh, grenades? Yeah, that's what I'm working on now is the grenades. Okay. Go yeah. So you got two, con two cool. standard or two concussion grenades? I just took standard. I feel like he's... Yeah. That's what he's seen in movies. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think I'll take one of each. Okay. That's what I did. Nice. Concussion flag. All right. Then, uh, let me make sure we've done our requisition stuff properly here. Okay. Um, so with equipment sorted out, uh, the liaison explained protocol for blackout. The blackout leaves the pit compromised. Uh, we have to assume hostile agents are responsible and that the pit is in danger. Protocol dictates that the senior officer stays in a room with an escape route while units of no fewer than three uh, with, sorry, uh, senior officer stays in a room with an escape route with while units of no fewer than three Joe, secure each room. That doesn't give us a lot of options. When you're ready, head down to the jet craft hangar by way of Enviro Control. Sweep each room for infiltrators, stay in constant communication, and report anything unusual. Any uh, last questions? Are you Joe's ready to head out? I do not feel ready, <laughs> it is, but I don't say anything. I just act. I just act tough. Okay, that's what he's learned to do when he's not sure. <laughs> All right. So then, with you guys looking at one another, who's the first one to start moving? I'm following these guys. Oh, Mayhem takes point, baby. Okay. That's what he does. All right. So Mayhem, uh, and then Stage Show, uh, Switchback, are you like going to be catching while watching the rear, or are you going ahead to make sure Stage Show has as much safety as possible? Um, I think that uh, he'll probably be in the rear since he's maybe more inclined to be like the sniper of the group. Okay. So. All right. So the stage show, uh, switchback sort of nods for you to go next. So you head yeah. off. And you guys head down to Enviro Control. So let's um, remind ourselves. So Environmental Control, you may remember, has those massive... Uh, it was switchback who was here last time. So you guys can picture as you're making your way into here, lights are off. Uh, you only have the, the light from maybe like the end of your, your weapon. Uh, or there's the emergency lighting coming up from the floor. Utter silence uh, in here. Do we need different music? I think we need different music. <laughs> this is... Uh, all right, let's try and find something dark. That's appropriate for here. Oh, what's this here? This is horror. That was very out of character for me to run a horror thing, but... Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Here you go, guys. <laughs> Let's make sure it's not overpowering your audio. I think that's working. Yeah, all right. So... Mayhem, you were the one who has a uh, point here. You get down to environmental control. Uh, tell me how you go into this massive blackened area with utterly silent, huge uh, atmospheric conditioning devices in it. I think the first thing, of course, it's dark-ish, right? The lights are still There's not lights, fully But on. it's almost like, uh, I, th I picture that the emergency lighting in that way that it almost like hurts your ability to see a little bit, like, because it casts these, uh, lighting is going up uh, yeah. more in a way to, to, to facilitate escape and a clear yeah. path out more than it is to properly yeah. illuminate the room. 
He's probably got a yeah. red mm. cast to it as well. So the whole That's thing's got this kind of, like, as you're making yeah. your way in. So, I mean, he's, you know, he's got his shotgun and he's just kind of sweeping his eyes back and forth and just slowly moving up and just trying to see if he sees any type of movement. So I will point out as you're making your way into, guys, you know what's on the Game Master screen for the G.I. Joe role-playing <laughs> game? A full skill list! Yay! Yay! Nice. <laughs> so then, would you... Let's see here. Would you give us an alertness check? Uh, mayhem, please. Nice. So you're making your way in. Uh, also, uh, I think you guys get a story point. Between now and next session, I'll put a little handout in with all your options for uh, how you're spending your story points too and how you gain story points. Because I'll need you guys to remind me. I will probably forget. By probably, I mean I probably already have. So <laughs> there's someone watching this three months from now who's furiously typing in a comment of like, yeah, motherfucker, you should have given them. <laughs> um, so then what, um, uh, as you're making your way in, there's no sound, but then you hear kind of a, like almost like a, um, a either high tech or like a, almost like a power drill, you know, kind of, but very, very smooth moving. You stop. You don't see what the source of the sound is. You're back in silence. The only sound is the sound of your heavy military boots stepping on the grating underneath you. Next cool. in the room is uh, stage show. Stage show, would you give us an alertness check, please? Uh, so if you don't have it, it's a D2, is that correct? Uh, if you don't have it, no, no, no. You roll 2D20, it's a snag. 2D20, oh, it's keep the lowest. Okay. And actually, you know what? That means also you can't crit if you're not trained. Because the crit comes from the skill dice. Yeah. Yeah. So you're making your way in. What's going through Stage Show's mind that he's so distracted? Um, I think he's I think he's like looking over this rifle. He's like, you know, this thing is super cool, but holy shit, I don't really know how to use it. Like, I've never shot anyone. <laughs> Where the hell am I? <laughs> so that's maybe what you're you're, you're paying attention to. Uh, Mayhem is doing the like uh, corners, check those corners, and uh, you're like checking out this. Wait, does this do this too? And it changes yeah. the mode on it. <laughs> totally. Switch back. You're last in the room. Would you give us an awareness check as well? Please. All right. Let's see. So this is a snag since he's not skilled. Uh, okay. Um, so it's just the 2d20, right? Yeah, it's just not... 2d20. Okay. Keep the lowest. Okay. Likewise, where's Switchback's mind at that he's so, you know, so distracted here? Um, I think he is kind of... <laughs> actually, I think he's, like, really mesmerized by his fire axe. Uh, and um, <laughs> as he's coming in, he's just thinking of ways that he can use this fire axe. And so he's, he's not paying close enough attention to what's in front of him. Does he have his uh, gun out, or does he have his fire axe out? Um... He would have he would have his gun out, but he's but he's thinking about that fire axe, and it's right. I, I'm thinking it's like on his back, you know. So he's like not used to it being there, and so he's really it's prominent in his mind. Yeah. Okay. So then he, back there? you um um yeah. So you all make your way in, and mayhem. If you as hard as you listen for this, you don't hear that sound again. Hmm. I don't, you didn't quite roll well enough to know sort of the direction from it where it's coming. It just carried out through here. What do you do? Um, You're on point, Mayhem. Yeah. I guess. Let's see. So. What, okay, because you said they didn't have like a map, right? No, but let me tell uh, you what it looked. Look, what the um, so the let's see here. Enviro Control, the, the hub of the pit's ventilation system. Artificial atmospheric generators tied to nearby solar panels and windmills control the temperature and humidity in the pit. Uh, 
That is the extent of it. I'm picturing it's kind of like um, there's probably it, it's almost like you know like a generating substation with a big mm -hmm. thing. To be able to uh, to control the atmosphere in this thing, it's got to be massive things that with a big like fan opening. There's a grill on the top right. to get for air intake, but to make sure like you know Joes or whatnot don't fall into them. But it's all still at this point and black in here, apart from the um, red uh, emergency lighting. How do you want to conduct the search here? There's probably like walkways that go between each of them and ladders that go up to be able to access them. There's access panels yeah, on I each think, side. I think that would be the next thing. You know, now he's kind of, he's like, okay, let's get higher up. Mm. So he wants to, to see if he can get up on a higher platform. Sure. To mm. do. Yeah, there's probably those, uh, there's probably walkways to go across uh, the top. So yeah. yeah, you get yourself up there. This is also the hub for um for the ventilation system uh, as well okay you know what i would do in future i think is i would probably use like a diagrammatic setup i wouldn't use a map but like having like a a circle to have like this is this place and here's what it oh, connects yeah. to so you at least know in relation what yeah. places you go to kind of like yeah. what um in osr they call a point crawl as opposed to a hash yeah, crawl where it was like point crawl or kind of like how you somewhat how you did the caves yeah, yeah, exactly. Somewhat where it's just exactly, yeah, yeah, totally. Where it just it mm -hmm. is connected to uh, what's important is where it goes to, as opposed to necessarily an accurate description. Yeah, how you right, get yeah. there doesn't matter. Yeah, right. So what this um, uh, what, and where this uh, goes to is is the uh, jet craft hangar. That's the most important place for you to go to. But okay. the ventilation so that, yeah, system here, real. I think you could probably access almost anywhere else uh, through the ventilation system from here. Okay, you get yourself up there and. Uh, switch back when you're in here before like you learned a lot of stuff and with everything shut down i think you feel remarkably um it's almost like it's a completely different place now right like the you could almost feel the the throbbing of the machinery and whatnot when you're in here in your chest now nothing and you just hear mayhem making his way along how do you want to organize the other two in here uh, are they going to come up on top with you as well uh, or are you going to spread out in this room? Because you don't have a clear vantage across the room as it is. Each of these big atmospheric units, there's probably like, what, six of them in here at least? And there's yeah. walkways in between of them, and there's a gangplank that goes across the top, and then there are vents that, you know, in all different parts in here that lead into different parts of the uh, of the pit. I say we uh, all get up here. But I think it. Switchback loves being up high too, so he, he would go with Mayhem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Scam. I'm not going by myself, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm certain I'm up there with them. So with uh, Mayhem, you haven't mentioned what you heard to anyone. What I'm you can assume as well, it. you guys, with your, um, the ATBs? HTB. HTBs. That's, that's right. Yeah, with your HTBs, I think they could probably be linked into some kind of like sub, you know, vocal unit. So mm -hmm. you guys can kind of communicate to one another over the headsets using your HTB. Mm -hmm. So, what do you say? There was some wow. sort of hum that I heard earlier. Wow. But I couldn't pinpoint what or where it was. I've definitely okay. seen a lot of movies where the bad guy comes in through the air conditioning system stage show you also haven't mentioned yet i think in, in sort of this makes sense for your character but you haven't mentioned what you saw that strange device oh yeah because he didn't really understand what he saw yeah oh, those kids up front some kind of a satellite attack something Hmm. If you describe what you saw, uh, Mayhem, you could give us a technology uh, check. Uh, are you trained in technology, Switchback? No. No? Okay. So, Mayhem, you're trained in tech, I think. Go ahead and give us a tech check. Yeah. Sure. I think it's a D6. Yeah. Tech check was the name of my Devo cover band in high school. Hmm. Right. Okay. 
you know, the device that he's describing has got to be something that fired off an electromagnetic pulse. Mm. Are, you, are you trained in science, uh, ma'am? Yeah, I've got a D2 in science. Give us a, a science uh, or a survival check. Okay. And actually, anyone trained in survival, uh, you can go ahead and give us a survival check as well. How survival? I can't remember. I wish I could keep scoring crits on the freaking D2s. What yeah. the hell? <laughs> Okay, so Mayhem, you're not sure? Give me two seconds, let's see what she's losing her mind sure. Yeah, no, I don't have survival hey, either. Cooper. As a lot of Joes are, I'm very specialized. I'm in the same boat, man, big time. I mean, that's the way you start out, right? You know? Yeah, I kinda, I mean, I kinda specialized, but I had to do some things. I think you did a pretty good job of spreading yours out relative to myself. I dumped everything into two places, I think, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it means that, that some of these roles to like know what's hard. I'm sorry, to know right, what's good going news, guys. on is hard for us, but. Anna Banana has scared off the Cobra infiltrators that were on our street. <laughs> nice. By which I mean kids who were delivering flyers, so. Yeah. They, um, okay. Uh, so anyone else want to make a mayhem? You're not able to make uh, heads or tails. Uh, mm. Switchback, are you trained in survival? Um, actually, I have to have D4 in survival. Yeah, give us a survival oh. check. Okay. Ooh. That's a one, isn't it? That is a one. Yeah. Uh, which would be a critical <laughs> fail, you can, but also you can spend a story point and re-roll now, if you like. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm going to spend a story point and try yeah. that again. Okay. Yeah. D4. Jesus. How did they get what worse? Is... A two and a one. <laughs> a two this time. Oh. Uh... So no idea. Yeah, you, you got uh, no clue. And Seicho, you already rolled before, so none of you guys are thinking of, like, what, what the hell is this thing? So it takes you about maybe uh, 10 minutes to do a, a proper, uh, you know, surveillance from the air or the uh, from a, um, a, van a higher vantage. No sign of anyone in here. If there is anyone who is infiltrating the pit, uh, their destination it does not appear to be the environmental controls. Where do you mm. guys want to go next? Didn't he tell us to go to the hangar? He said to the jetcraft hangar, yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, I guess we shouldn't we follow orders? So, the jetcraft hangar, I actually have a visual aid for you guys. Ooh. In the okay. event you, that the uh, three sky strikers didn't clue you off, the top <laughs> left there gives you a handy guide to what you're walking into. <laughs> now I don't have the um, uh, the map uh, or the uh, scale set up properly here, but let me just move these over here, and we're gonna make you guys teeny. Ooh. And I'm gonna distort you just a scooch. There we go. Sacho. Mayhem. Had you fit roughly in uh, the area here. Oh, I should have given you guys dynamic lighting, too. There is directional lighting you can do now, too, with the cone. But uh, that's just the way I'm placing you guys. You guys uh, can Ooh. place yourself sort of where you like. I'll, uh, as you're entering, you're coming in from that top left corner there. The metallic surface of this domed arena of a room reflects the cool beams of your flashlights, illuminating the borders, but leaving the heart of the hangar pitch black. Gnarly shadows scuttle along the dome, cast by unseen things in the darkness. And as you walk in here, why don't you each give us an awareness check once again, please. Uh, Mayhem, because you know what you're listening for, take a boost to your roll. So roll one dice higher than your normal skill. Oh, okay. I also realized I have an edge on Smart's test when looking for hidden items. Oh, then, yeah, so roll an extra d20 and, and see if that replaces. Roll two d20. Uh, oh. No, just roll, roll the regular one with a d20 plus oh. whatever, and then roll an extra d20 afterwards. Gotcha. Or we can roll, or you can roll two d20 plus whatever your skill dice is, and we'll take the higher of the two. We can do the math okay. ourselves. Boy, oh, 
What do you got, Cicho? I also saw something that I saw. I have acute hearing. Oh, Whether nice. it is a natural occurrence or something that has developed in you, one of your five senses is much stronger than the average person, and you gain the following benefits. You gain an edge when rolling a skill test for alertness, if the chosen sense can be applied. Yeah. And you gain a uh, one dice upshift on a non-alertness skill test. Okay. When you use oh, and the skill. Mayhem, that your skill, you have training alertness, don't you? Yeah. So it should have been a D4 you're rolling because you got the- Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So upshift. does that mean that I, it removes the penalty? Uh, for, for which, for being- uh, if sound, if I'm listening for danger with alertness, it gives it says you. I gain an edge, and I currently have a, uh, with the opposite of an edge. Uh, snag. So you just roll. Uh, yeah, snag. you're just rolling one d twenty flat. Okay. Okay. That's better at least. Yeah. Yeah. And if I train in it, I could get a big advantage. Definitely. So for now. Okay. So. Oh yeah. Way All better. Right. So mayhem, uh, you got a total of ten. So that, uh, yeah, that's that's what I count. Yeah, yeah, and four for switchback. Because I think you're rolling with the snag, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And but stage show, you come in here, and you can hear somewhere off in the darkness. There, it sounds honestly like um, a fan to you. Oh. I, I hear a fan over there, and it'll point in exactly the direction. Okay. And uh, if you guys, let's do this. Why don't you use your, uh, why don't you each roll alertness once more, and I'm going to use it as an attack on the evasion to try and spot whatever the hell it is that's out there. I also have this. Um, oh, skill. that's really cool. Okay. Uh, it only matters if they're within thirty feet, though. I thirty guess. feet, though. Yeah. Yeah. So for now, that that's not going to apply. That's a good one to, to bear in mind, though. Look at that. So all... Mayhem. I am. Oh wow! Look at that. I got a fourteen even with my penalty. Holy smokes! Uh, and oh, switch back. That would have been great. Okay, so that's uh, 14. Um, let's see here. That actually is both, so both Stacio and Mayhem. You get the benefit of this as well, Switchback, because you can see. Let me show you what's hovering out there. Sure, it's some kind of cobra crap. <laughs> <laughs> that there are oh. two of them hovering in the air and guys eh. we get to start making with the combat so let me get drop one of the or the uh, tokens for these suckers out there so you know where they are where the heck here they're huge look at that the size of a Sky oh, Striker. Just kidding. Huge. That's one. <laughs> and... Da, 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 da. Okay, then we got one health. Okay, so there's one. And there is two. So, here is how initiative works. Right. We only roll initiative once, and then it sets the order, but you can spend a standard action to try and reset your initiative. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, it does use your action, so, I mean, you know... We'll have right. to see how, how useful it is, but uh, that is something you can do. Uh, initiative is rolled with your initiative skill. <laughs> Cleverly named initiative. <laughs> so Surprise, surprise. Go ahead and let me do this. I'm going to add each of you to the... Um, here we go. Add a turn. So it's the usual thing. You roll a d20 and you add the... Your skill. Your whatever your initiative yep. skill yeah. is. Yeah, and oh. then if you guys could kindly... Oh, hold on, switch back. i got to move you down just a scooch so I can... As turn here, um, adjust yourself in the turn order uh, with whatever you rolled, and I will roll for the drones, the Viper drones. Wow. 
Oh, I got a one on my skill. Does that mean anything? No. Only a one. Uh, one on, on the, the other, d20, twenty is a right. potential fumble. A uh, max on your skill is a potential crit. Right. Okay. So where is it here? Ooh. There it is. There it so. is. Okay. And and and. We need a nap the, after this game. Yeah, that's that's my usual. I'll tell you precisely what my Saturday routine is. Is as soon as we finish <laughs> up our session, I order my uh, breakfast. I got a breakfast. Uh, what is it? A ran rancheros wrap and a single blueberry pancake that'll come in. I'll nap a little bit while it's coming, and then I have my breakfast and probably nap in the mid afternoon. I'll, it's actually quite nice here today. So Anna Banana may be in for a, a stroll as well. Mm -hmm. Quite early. Can I roll terrible for mine? Uh, switch back. Okay, and then you could enter your initiative into the. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I rolled. I'm so spoiled by roll twenty. Yeah. yeah <laughs> really. And even this, like this is for. Imagine if we were trying to play online without the benefit of this of roll twenty. So like it's, it's unfortunate we don't have a uh, a sheet for it yet, but it's still pretty darn good. All right. Yeah. So. Then, uh, Mayhem, you are up first for taking our first combat round of the game. You have a speed of three or higher, which means you get to move a standard and a free action. What are you doing? Um, oh, let me move so these back as a scooch, too, because I don't think they're quite that close in. Oh, uh, okay. And I think, Mayhem, are they? this is right after, know. as you're looking around in the darkness, you shine a one, and you're like, there's a drone! And stage show, you see one as well, you're like, there's a second one! About how high off the ground are they, Kevin? They are probably about uh, 20 feet up. Okay. One of the benefits of this uh, uh, hangar is there's tons of space above for them to fly. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to move in closer. Okay. And what is my move? 30? Uh, yeah, that's right. Each has a different thing. And I think it's five foot squares in this game. You're okay. a little bit bigger than the, uh, than the hacks. Yeah. I don't want to make it illegible for you guys, but feel free to, you know... Just try and sure, roughly move yourself there. We're not going to be uh, worrying about like tiny little bits of movement. Okay, so Mayhem, you moving? Yeah, two. I'm counting. Mm, okay. <laughs> Pay no attention to me. I'm doing math. <laughs> <laughs> it's the pain um, expression on your face. I feel yeah. your pain. Saturday okay. morning. I'm here for cartoons and bad <laughs> cereal, not uh, math <laughs> lessons. Yeah, what did we say? Now let me do this. These will be easier to see these guys if I put a little dot on them. I just zoomed in. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll work too. But yeah, the dot does help too. Okay. All right, so Mayhem, you move forward. You got a free action and you've got a uh, standard. Um, I don't think I could. Well, yeah, I could probably shoot them with the shotgun. Yeah. Um, I could definitely hit that one that's uh, closest to me right yeah, there. Yeah, 20. What's the short range yeah. of your shotgun? Um, range of the shotgun is 2060, so... 2060, so definitely in long range. Yeah. You might have to roll a snag then. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, defend attack action. Let me just check on ranged attacks. I can't remember if it's a snag or if it just... Uh, oh, wait. Did, hold on a second. You Did you move your extra 10 feet? Oh yeah, your first from your Yo-Jo ability. Yeah, battle cries. Oh, yeah, I mean, the brave member of GI Joe, Joe, you fiercely charge into battle in the first round of combat. If your first action is to move, you move ten additional feet. So you could. I forgot about that. You nice. could close the distance to that thing. Okay. So I can get. Oh, should be able to get. Right about. You that. might actually get to close range. There you go. Yeah. I think we'll say close range for this then. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Well, let so me then. Know. Uh, it will be using its evasion. I'm going to spend a story point just to keep things interesting uh, to increase its defense by five. All right. Because I got lots of things. Oh, and I think because we're at the start of an encounter. Uh, Jeffrey, would you give us a 1d2 plus one roll, please? Two plus one. I get three story points. Holy Toledo. So I'll spend one, the first one of those uh, to... Uh, Bump it up. So my defenses are going to be five higher. All right. Okay. So uh, I'll add two to this. That means this is a five. Go right ahead, ma'am. See you race up. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. 
empty fire, but this thing kind of, it's got some kind of evasive um, uh, subroutine in it. That is a miss. You still have a free action. I don't know if you have any, free action I think is gonna be like the, the fucking bonus action in uh, fifth edition where it's like, you sure, nothing, no, nothing useful you can do with yeah. that, okay. Okay, so then it is Switchback's turn. Are you going to switch back? Um, let's see. So, Switchback will um, pull out his... Uh, well, he already has his rifle out, and he will train his uh, rifle on the other one that Mayhem is not approaching and okay. try to take a shot at it. I'm going to spend another story point to keep this interesting. So, okay. go ahead. All right, so this is... Let's see. So it'd be your targeting. Sorry, so this is just a D20. Um, Are you trained in targeting? No, I don't think so. I don't think I am. So that'd be 2D20 with a snag, or so it's a bit of D, okay. so it's rolling with a snag then. All right. Okay. Oh. So that is unfortunately a miss. Uh, stage show, what are you doing? Uh, he's going to pull out. He's got this rifle he's been looking at this whole time, basically just paying attention to. He's like, all right. And he's going to try and uh, fire on this thing. Okay. Go right ahead. So uh, he uses his technology. Let me just double check here. Instead of targeting. Yeah, so now I'm going to use. 20 plus 1d8. Story point. Okay, here we go. Oh my god. So this oh, is. Oh, so I rolled a 1 with yep. the. <laughs> you want to spend a story point to reroll? Because um, this is where it would be a critical. A fumble. Oh, okay. Right. And you gain a story point for. Or how does that work? If you roll a fumble, you gain a story point, but it, something else bad happens, like your gun might jam or something like that. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, I don't want to break my gun on okay, my Okay, so you can spend shot. a story point. Any one that you roll, whether on the skill dice or the other dice, you can spend a story point and re roll that dice. Okay. Okay. Oh, just the d20? No, no, uh, just the, the, the whole thing? Yeah, just the d20. Oh, okay, so I just re rolled the d20. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. Whoa. All right, so then it is the drone's turn. Uh, they have, okay, so. Um, they do have a move and an attack, so they're gonna, this one's gonna move, kind of reposition to be out of your range there, Mayhem. This one's gonna move over here. And then there is, uh, it's a silent, almost like a puffing. Puff, puff. As they're firing, these things seem to have silenced weapons on them. And let's see here. So this will be first against Mayhem. Fucking nat 20. Okay. Mayhem, you take two points of damage. <laughs> this thing hits you. Uh, and then for switchback. That one's going to try and return fire on you. I am rolling... Uh, with a snag on this one because the range is not great for these weapons. Oh. Uh, it misses you. You can hear something. It sounds like a bullet hitting uh, the wall behind you. Um, then, top of the round, Mayhem, what are you doing? Wait a minute. I'm still I'm still working on... How does my armor influence the damage? Uh, nothing. It just means that I'm rolling against your toughness. You're rolling against a higher Yeah, number. I rolled a nat 20, so you can't really... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and the first two, point comes from your... Yep. Oop. There yep. you go. That should be correct for you. So you're, uh, yep. you lose that temp thing you got from that good uh, meal, your chowder. Yep. The chowder right, shield is so gone. I am going to... Okay, first of all, yep. I have to use my move action to reload. Shack, shack. Okay. Right. And then I'm going to use my free action to aim. Nice. What does it grant you? Uh, I think it's a. Uh, they put that up arrow. I think is that it. That's an upgrade. So you increase that's a dice. shift in your shooting dice. Yeah. That's right. That's a shift in my die. Yep. So I go to a D6, I believe. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to continue shooting at this one down here. It's probably at a longer range now. Okay. Though. Oh. 
Yeah, I was just reading through the combat actions and I was going to point out if as long as you don't move, you can aim. Yeah, or where you do your movement in the, I think, or, in the process. Oh, I got to spend a story. No, I'm going to save a story point for this. Okay. Go ahead. Let's see. And... Nice. All and... right. Uh, and that is actually a crit uh, because you rolled more than double the, um, wait, why are you rolling with an edge? I, I was actually rolling with not the edge with snag because he's not uh because he's do we say he's in long range no uh, oh, oh right so he's he in long range. oh no <laughs> yeah all right so yeah you fire yep. buckshot fills the the sky and unfortunately it's not um not able to connect with it switch back what are you doing um switch i think uh switchback wants to use his jet pack nice okay and how high up are they the, uh, 20 uh, feet 20 feet so he will try to fly up within melee range of the nearest one that he can okay so now um you, you do you wish to just move up uh, or you'd find on switching to a weapon um i need to switch weapon okay yeah That's i think i think that. let's see here uh one you can use a your free action to like take out or put away, but only one item. Like, so you can like switch your guns. Like well, you, could... you could drop your gun. If you just want to go and hammer this thing with your uh, ax, you could drop your gun. Oh, for... Just drop it on the ground. Yeah. yeah. And then like yeah, as a okay. free action, get the thing and up right, there. Then nice. that's what he will do. He'll drop okay. the rifle and reach for the ax as okay. he's trying to fly up. Yep. And then go ahead and give us a, I think it's a might. Might okay, and I'm not spending well, a point. It's in your, let's see here, might or finesse. That's okay. I like that. Safely putting away your item is a free action, but if you just drop that shit on the floor, good to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's either finesse or might, whichever one you choose. Well, they're both. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. There, it'd be a snag either way. So okay. I, I rolled a one. Oh God! <laughs> so... Oh man! Oh, um... that's a fumble. Then, so I think what happens is you go up, and uh, you did not because of the darkness. Maybe you didn't realize that near the edge there there were some hanging cables, and you snag the uh, jetpack in it. You're like, wow! And slim to the side. Give us a um, athletics. What is it? Is it athletics? Yeah, athletics check, uh, please. Okay. All right. Critical, you and you free yourself. You're snagged up for a little bit. Uh, it was only a DC ten, and that's a is the yeah and the two two was the twenty sided. Oh, or no, no, I guess not. Let's see, I don't know how. Yeah, those are the D two. So it's not a crit because it's a D two. But you, uh, yeah, you get caught up in in the uh, the um, th uh, the cables. You're sort of pulled to the side, but you don't. Um, uh, you don't slam into the wall. You're able to sort of like catch your jets, drop free of it, and then you're hovering once again. Okay. Stage show, what are you doing? Okay, so he's going to aim. <laughs> he's like, okay. oh yeah, aiming. Okay. And also, he's thinking back to his training uh, from earlier in the day, and yep. it gives me edge on one technology roll, and I'm going to use it on this targeting. Awesome. Okay. So roll so, with edge, and then you're uh, and you use a technology for this attack, right? Yeah. Okay. And so I get uh, oh, so it's two d twenty for the edge, and then I roll because I aimed. I roll a d ten. Nice. Plus one d ten. All right, here we go. It's got to be a great hit. What? Come on, fifteen no, is your best. Fifteen. Uh, fifteen <laughs> is still no. That I didn't spend a, a story point. So what does it look like as you train this sonic weapon on it, and this thing then explodes? Yeah, he. Uh, I th he's yeah. He's that's exactly the one he's aiming at. Um. Yeah. He turns. He's he's aiming. He's thinking about his training, and he's like, you know, oh right, okay. I got to input the exact distance here. Yeah. For the for the sound to go off, and then he just pulls the trigger. He sort of closes his eyes and prays after he's sort of lined up all the 
Okay. Dude. So you pull, and this yeah. thing hits it, and it explodes into shrapnel, scattering across the uh, blackness of this hangar. Nice. Uh, and you hear from somewhere else in the darkness, someone curses. Fuck. Uh, we'll find hmm. out who's in the darkness in two weeks' time. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so then, uh, for those listening at home, uh, thank you so much for joining us for our first proper session of GI Joe. Let me move us over to our main screen here. Make with the outro. All right. Um, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, uh, the campaign, or the game we're playing, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, in addition, there's a link down below to the Dungeon Musings Discord server. While we don't have a channel dedicated to the G.I. Joe role-playing game, we do have one there dedicated to assorted games where we have been talking about G.I. Joe. And there are uh, channels over there for every other game we run on the channel on a regular basis, as well as a ton of other uh, great um, uh, a great community over there and you are more than welcome to join us there's channels for um, uh, finding a group for you know setting up uh, and selecting between different virtual tabletops uh, convention information deals that are offered by different publishers so lots of great people and very knowledgeable as well uh, there's also a link down below to uh, something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really amazing organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphan and abandoned children, including ongoing relief efforts in the uh, Ukraine and the surrounding countries. Um, as a small way, first off, all donations that go through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman, just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services uh, as a small way of saying thank you uh, if you donate ten dollars or more uh, since or have done so since january 1st you will be able to vote on our charity campaign that we are running this year we have a six-part charity campaign that is linked and donations from january through to june give you an opportunity to uh, vote on the first three sessions uh, we have had uh, some fast and furious voting on the components of that at first adventure, what game we're playing, when it's set, and whatnot. You head on over to the Dungeon Musings Discord server's charity initiatives channel to see all about that. And if you happen to donate $25 or more, every $25 Canadian gives you a chance to win the grand prize or one of the other great prizes in our next charity raffle. We have a wide selection of cool gaming stuff and some other... Um, Gosh, gaming stuff and uh, stuff from the Dun Dungeon Musings Red Bubble Shop. And there's some cha uh, chainmail dice bag uh, from our buddy Dave, our resident armorsmith. Uh, there's also going to be um, a prize we haven't offered in a while, which will be a chance to play a session. Uh, if you win that prize, I will write and run a session for you. We're going to record it. We won't necessarily stream it, but we will record it so you will have a copy of uh, the session. And uh, it will be some players from the roster who will be joining us for that. So you will have a... Uh, I'll give you a selection between uh, different uh, games. Uh, so you could win a game with us. You could win some cool gaming stuff. Uh, you uh, could win some stuff from the Dungeon Musings Red Bubble Shop. Um, uh, and you can help shape the charity campaign we're playing this year, our Year of Ill Omens charity uh, campaign. And you get a chance to help out some kids who could really use some help. Um, there's also a link down below to our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent unionized uh, retailer of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs in North America. Not only do they have an amazing selection of new RPGs, including the wonderful G.I. Joe role-playing game. I got my copy from uh, Noble Knight. Um, they also have a, a full selection of uh, new uh, RPGs, uh, board games and card games, and an unmatched selection of uh, hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs. If they do not have in stock what you're looking for, you can most often put it on a want list and they will send you an email when they have it in stock. They also buy uh, old games as well too. So if you are looking to offload some stuff you don't use anymore, uh, they may be effective. You can contact them and, and uh, send them a list and then they will also, I think they, they have some arrangement where they send boxes out. As you can tell, I don't tend to sell games all that much. So I don't really know how that works. <laughs> um, if you make a purchase of $10 or more through their website, be sure to enter the code THEMUSE at checkout, all caps, all one word, and you'll save yourself 10% on a purchase. If you're listening this, to this at a different time, come back in a more recent video and find what the uh, current code is because it changes every like four months or so. Um, the last thing I will say is an enormous thank you to our stalwart Joes. Guys, you got a chance to actually shoot stuff today and take something down. So, Jamie, <laughs> awesome. Will, and Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining me in the pit today. Congratulations on your successful training, your tasks, and your first mission out. 
Thank you. It was great. Awesome. Then we'll be back in the pit to see what other, uh, what nefarious deeds that uh, Cobra is up to in the pit in two weeks' time. Until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and see the troubles that our Joes are uncovering in this blackened out pit. And until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming.